Well, look, everything points to him. He's got form. He's won there before. He's very confident. He's smelling the fake flowers there. <laughs> I did an off microphone sniff. <laughs> an off microphone sniff like he was smelling the azaleas. The plastic roses. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome to a podcast unlike any other. It is of course the Masters Preview Podcast of the Bunkered Podcast brought to you by Callaway Golf. Hello, my name is Michael McEwen. Delighted to have your company for what is going to be probably the best podcast we've done all year. Failing that, maybe even the best podcast ever, who knows? (laughs) I don't. We'll just wait and see what happens over the next hour and a half or so. Lots and lots to talk about. This is always the podcast I look forward to the most every year because it means that the greatest event on the planet maybe is right upon us. The Open Championship are going to be very unhappy about that. The Ryder Cup probably not best pleased either. And I dare say, I dare say that the people in charge of the Dispatch Trophy and the Lothians will be sending me an angry email shortly too. But no, the Masters, a huge deal for us, huge deal for golf. And we've got lots to get into. So let's bring in our two... Voices of Reason, experts, whatever you want to call them. First of all, Bunkered Editor, Bryce Ritchie, hello, welcome. How are we? Very good. Buzzing, I think is probably how I'd define it. You? Mm-hmm. Yes, excited. Um <laughs> tell your face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was thinking the other day that it, it uh, had been a long time since the Masters, and it's, uh, I feel that like sometimes you think, you know, mm. it wasn't that long ago, but now I feel as though I'm ready for the Masters. I don't like the build-up. The Ryder Cup build-up is brutal. We've discussed that mm-hmm. before. But yeah, I uh, I can't wait. You're all set, can't ready wait. to go. Associate Editor of Bunkert, Alex Perry. Hello, welcome. Hello. You're in the studio once again. I You've am. made the trip north to Glasgow. Yep. That should tell people how big of a deal this is, if nothing else does. Yep, I got up at five o'clock this morning to do this journey, so... Thank you. I you're, think... You're the yep. father of two children, aren't you, up at five o'clock every morning? Uh, absolutely not. Oh. That's what your other half is for. Is that what you're getting at? A bit of a pregnant pause there. No, lovely to be here. I like sitting here. I, I like that we're all in our different Augusta garms, mm-hmm. threads. Yeah, we'll so for the benefit of people who are listening, because we are filming this for YouTube as well, so if you're listening and you want to go and watch and see what we look like, we're in our lovely studio, which is decked out in all sorts of master's merchandise and memorabilia and unfortunately we look like this <laughs> <laughs> that's why we've got an 18 plus certificate on the video but i yes. like the parking permit you like that i like that mine yep. wasn't like that mine was just a sticker that once you pulled it off the car that was it was ruined yeah so it's their stickers are back mm-hmm. there's a sticker yep. this year sticker oh. actually, yeah. so there's gonna be a rental car in atlanta airport that's going to be absolutely full yeah, yeah. of masters per- <laughs> parking <laughs> permits <laughs> But Alex is right, we're all wearing our Masters gear. You've got a jumper that I wanted to buy last year but couldn't find in an extra small. Bryce, you're going with the long sleeve T-shirt. Very Chris Martin, well, so, Coldplay yeah, I'm, I'm loving this. This is very the emo. best. I do think this is very emo. Uh, I do think this is the best thing you can buy. It's pretty I, cool. I do look the best. The, the sleeve is smart. Myself. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and uh, I'm going with, uh, they call it a tea hoodie. It's one of those sort of lightweight hoodies that seem to be Popular now. I quite like a it. Hootie, a hootie, surely. A hootie. Yeah. And the blowfish. Is that what That's it's probably called? why no, you can't I'm call it that. I've just made it up. Yeah, it might work. But then again, hootie at the Masters just makes me think of Hootie Johnson, the former club chairman. Oh, doesn't it just? <laughs> <laughs> Brings back fond <laughs> memories. So we should also introduce our fourth and final guest on the show this week, and that is Mr. Augustus. Ritchie. He's, he's yours. Let, let people know Augustus. who's here. Uh, a little gnome. Look at this little dude. He is very cool. He's like a mini, he's like an Augusta Santa. So How did you get him? Because I was candy. there last year and <laughs> I could not get a gnome. They sell out apparently. Yeah. So I got, it's, I'm not sure whether I got that in 2018 or whether that's just the number. I don't know. Yeah. So for the benefit again of those listening, he's got white overalls on this gnome. He's got, he's basically dressed up like a, a master's like caddy. Like a master's caddy. Yeah. But some of them are, I've got like themes, whatever. Mm-hmm. So they do. They do sell out, I believe, so I must have just got lucky. They're quite cheap, though, relatively speaking, are they not? No, I think you'll keep that opinion to yourself. That was <laughs> a good $35, $40. That's pretty good going. Yeah, no, it is. Uh, everything. But that's the thing about Augusta merch. That's why we're all mm. rolling in it, because it is cheap. <laughs> and that's a little nod to the r and Mind you, we said that yeah. last year. The r and prices last year weren't actually that bad. They were better. At the open. But no one does it like Augusta. No one does it like Augusta. We'll talk about the food and, well, and the sandwiches and the drink. The drink's really cheap. But the, 
the merch is affordable. Yeah, the food That's and why you even can cheaper if you're in the media center. Everything. Yes. Until you get into that little room at the back of the yeah. shop, which is yes. the, the, the premium the stuff. Premium room. And you take one step in, and someone like it's like that episode of The Simpsons where he's look, home is looking for a new bar, and he, and he walks <laughs> in, he goes, "Please turn around and leave." In that point, it's like as soon as I took a step in there, they went, "No, <laughs> off you go." It's funny you go go in there, and it's like the cashmere jumpers are all on display, and you're like, "Ooh, I like the look of that." Five hundred dollars, yes, seven no, grand, no, and none of that stuff you'll wear at Augusta because it's all warm stuff. Yeah, all, it's mm-hmm, all the cheap exactly. T-shirts and the hats is out next door. But yeah, no, can I also point out Augustus is in remarkably good condition for yeah. for a gnome that is what seven years old now, six years yeah, old. Yeah, that's because you stupidly put your gnome outside. Yes, and it got hurt. The dog broke it. This is an indoor gnome. <laughs> an indoor <laughs> gnome. <laughs> he sets. The maker of the gnome yeah. is suddenly turning in his grave. He sits in my, in the the welcome, uh, welcome room in the house. I don't know what you call that. <laughs> the front door, basically. Your porch. I don't have a porch, but it's something like that. But he sits in there, and he's just uh, every time somebody comes to the front door, you can see him through the window. So he's that's his, and he's not. I make sure he's not sitting in the sun, so he doesn't. Get get faded, tainted. Yeah. Uh, he's in remarkably good condition. Alex, will you be investing in a Masters Gnome this year? I desperately tried to get one last year, but every time I walked down to the, even when I was going as early as possible, there were people. The funny thing is, is because where the car park is, you have to walk down past the media centre. So mm-hmm. I'm walking down the hill to go to the shop. And people are flooding back away from the golf course to the cars to take their because they yeah. what they do is they go to the shop, they spend a grand, <laughs> and then they go back to the car and shove it all back in the car before they go and watch golf for the day, which is genius in a way. But I saw so many gnomes like flooding towards me <laughs> as I was walking down to the shop. Attack of the gnomes! I am going to try and get someone. I, I, I've got that. I know someone that's there before me this weekend. They're over for the Anwa before the Masters, and I'm sort of I might slide into did his not, DMs. Did they not ban did they not ban um the media from going to the press centre at a certain time? Not the, the media uh, the the, shop. The, yeah, so, they, the so last year they times. were they were very strict about it. They said so for example, if it opened at seven AM mm-hmm. they said that the press people of the media weren't allowed to go in until eight. But mm-hmm. I mean just oh, you hide your badge. Yeah. Pretty much. I, I think it's oh, the, really I think it's one of those Did you just say that? Yeah. No. <laughs> That's what you see other come. people do. <laughs> yeah. Someone told, me, someone told me. Someone told me. That's what the boys at Golf Monthly were <laughs> saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they all do of them. it all the time. They even take their phones down there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll uh, I, I might try and get another gnome this year. I'm pretty disappointed that mine is, is legless. He's he's a proper Glasgow gnome now, he's got no legs, but yeah, it's um welcome Augustus. It's nice to see you here. I hope you make some contributions to the show. Let's talk about the tournament itself, gents. That's all we're going to talk about on this week's episode. It's the 88th edition of the Masters. How are the anticipation levels, Bryce? I mean, it's we say this every year, but it's like, oh, it's been a long time since we had a major. Yes, since the last one. But how are the anticipation levels this year? <laughs> I'm actually, it's probably the same as last year because I've kind of got the same vibes as last year. There's, okay. you, you've got the three, the same three big players. And there's a bit of, in the back of my mind, what's maybe going to happen with Liv. Liv's had a full mm. season. I don't know. I'm, I'm, sounds really a really terrible an- answer, but I'm kind of thinking it's kind of have the same vibes as last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I still have absolute... I'm not going, so I'm yep. gutted about that, obviously. But... I've got my full snack game sorted. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, know, that's the important bit of the pod. That's why I know people tune into this. I know when I'm going to be in the couch. I know last year I had my, I made my nacho cheese sauce and I'm going to do that again. And it is sensational. Um, is this your version of pimento cheese, like the special no, master's cheese recipe? I'm going to make my own version of, I'm going to try and do an Augusta mac and cheese on a Saturday night. Nice, okay. So that's going to, apart from my curry on the Friday night, which they don't do Augusta. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm excited. I am in a different world to you. I'm slumming it this year. You guys mm-hmm. are getting to go. Yeah, both of us. Um, and it's like, you're on a plane in what, three, four days, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. Uh, you say that now. Yeah. Instagram has been doing nothing but serve me Plane constant crashes. reels of not crashes so much, although there's been a couple of those, but just really, really bad turbulence. Yeah, you know how like your phone can listen to what you're saying, and yeah. I think I maybe used the word turbulence once, and Instagram's and going, it. "Oh, show oh, him." <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's a combination of that and snakes. I'm just getting served relentlessly. It never serves me. 
Natalie Imbruglia, for example. Yeah. Well, there you go. I'm going to, I'm going yeah. to have to say Natalie Imbruglia's name. So you're a bit worried about your flight? Oh, yeah. yeah, genuinely. And get this, I didn't tell you this, and I wasn't going to, but we're here now, and the cameras are rolling, so this is, I may as well just admit it. Last week, we mentioned on the pod, when Alex was on his halls that we did, that I'd had tonsillitis, and I had to go to the doctor and, you know, get medication for it. When I was there, I asked my GP for anything I could take for, you know, a little bit of You're feed not doing flying. that again, are you? Well, that was the thing that cured it last time. So I had a chronic fear of flying for a number of years. I was prescribed diazepam when I was flying to Orlando one year. And ever since then, I've been fine. I took diazepam for the next, like, two or three long-haul flights. I did totally fine and weaned myself off it. And flying's not been an issue, but... The past maybe three or four flights I've been on, there's been a little bit of just eh, turbulence that I don't enjoy. I know it's perfectly safe. I know it's perfectly normal. That was the flight we were on to London. That was one of them, That yeah. was not good. Not good. And, you know, you try and tell yourself all the sensible stuff, all the, the logic that applies. I've got a family friend who's a pilot who once told me a great line, which is the pilot wants to get home more than anybody. So it's like, yeah, okay, everything about it makes sense. But when you're sitting on the plane and you're getting tossed around the air, you're yeah. going, oh, I'm going to die. <laughs> so I asked my GP, if, you know, you can see it in my records. I've had diazepam before for a fear of flying. Can I have some again? He said, no. Really? Yeah. <laughs> They're no longer allowed to prescribe sedatives like that for people on flights, apparently. Because and I, I suppose it makes sense if you pass out, which it's designed to do. Well, you did pass out. After having two or three yeah. pints to go with it, which I didn't realise uh, you weren't meant to do. Well, that's, that's <laughs> so what I was, was going to say. Out. You're not going to have that, but you could just get leathered. Before, yeah, and Alex, you're Alex driving. Can drive the car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a pretty straight road anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, so... I, I was told I can't take it because if you obviously pass out and there's a mid-air emergency, which is the whole thing I'm taking the bloody tablets for, yeah. then, you know, I would be not able yeah, to I've do what I'm meant one, to do. Yeah, I've only had one flight to Augusta that was quite bad turbulence, and it, it does go through the back of my mind that this could be it. Oh, right. Are you, uh, when you, when you hit it. turbulence, are you, a, are you a screamer? No. Okay. I'm just that's, that, they're the worst people, the ones that s- yeah. like squeal. They make it worse. Yeah, I don't scream. I just panic yeah, inwardly. Yeah. I'm not a good yeah. flyer. I just think, I'm, why? Yeah, my why heart starts happening? to race and I get the cold sweat. Yeah. But like, when you've Whoa. seen the air hostess like grabbing something, you know that this is big. Yeah, this could, this could be it. The cabin what? crew. The cabin crew is always the the clue, isn't it? If they're still walking up and yeah. down, you know you're okay. Uh, but it's. Uh, but as I said before, if that flight goes down. Half a European golf media, <laughs> DP World Tour, <laughs> screwed. Mm-hmm. Like, that's it. Half a Sky Sports, you know, gone. It's quite a big loss to the industry. You would be replaceable, but... This has got really dark. <laughs> so, <laughs> if anyone's listening... I mean, you're going to have a few pages to fill in the next edition. You're, yeah, you're there gonna is. You're going to need a new columnist to start. Uh, you're going to need a new... Podcast anyway, co-host. the flight lands. <laughs> flight lands. Life is good. Alex and I will spend yeah. the week on the ground. And I won't. And you won't. So I'll, I'll get over it. You've not been for a few years. You've been no. to three Masters. Last one, 2018. Yeah. Have you got the hankering to go back? Yes, like, I do want to, but um, that's not really my gig anymore. But yeah, I do want to go back. <laughs> wasn't your gig at the time. It didn't yeah, stop you. Yeah. I want to go. So I want to... What's it like go... watching on TV now that you've been? Because I've not done you that You don't realise that. <laughs> hell... 14 minutes. Yeah. You had 14 minutes. 14 minutes. <laughs> uh, no, I, th- I, I think Sky's coverage is still uh, superb. Mm-hmm. They obviously put more effort into yeah. the majors, but when they do, they're exceptional at it. I'm one of the guys that was delighted that Sky Sports took the Open because I yeah. thought they'd do a great job. No offence to the BBC, but... They blow the BBC out of the water when it comes to golf coverage, and I do think Sky are exceptional at it. So I you didn't um, like cricketer Michael Vaughan interviewing players off the main. Wasn't a huge fan of that. No, that wasn't no. great. When you've gone from Dougie Donnelly to Shane O'Donoghue <laughs> to Michael Vaughan, yeah, yeah, not a great, not move. the best. Yeah. But Alex, we're going to be there. Now, this we is are. my fourth Masters. It's your second. Mm-hmm. I remember what it was like to go for the, the second time. Obviously, I feel like a bit more of a wizened hack at this point, but. Tell me where you're at in terms of how you're feeling. Do you have the same anticipation levels that you had last year? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. It's just a job now. But it's, it? a, it's, <laughs> it's a different kind of anticipation, isn't it? Because when you go for the first time, as I'm sure you had, and as I'm sure you had, 
it's, it's somewhere you've wanted to go basically your entire life. Since yeah. you were conscious of what the Masters was, you've wanted to go there. And I'm sure that's the same for millions of people around the world. So, I mean, the, the one thing I want to do differently this time is play the golf course on Monday. So if I can, uh, if I can find a way to get... How, how do you cheat that ballot? How do you do it? I'll tell you Just off here. Some, yeah. Probably, yeah, some, <laughs> some serious flirting is going to be done next week. Uh, I, de- I, I would like to go and see more of the golf course. I mean, uh, presumably you went alone when you went, and, mm-hmm. and same with you for the last few years. This is obviously your first time going with, with a, a partner in crime, so to speak. And I think, and I'm, so, I'm hoping that that will allow us to be able to sort of tag team and actually go and be able to see a bit more of the course, get more of a vibe for what's going on. I mean, last year... The Tuesday, in particular, because of all the press conferences, you you get in, you have breakfast, the press conferences start, and before you know it, it's six o'clock in the yeah, evening, yeah. Four, six and you and you yeah. and you finish it, and you're like, I haven't even left this building. Mm-hmm. Like I, I could like, I could have done this at home. Like, I could have <laughs> just sat and watched the press conferences at home. So definitely want to get out and see a bit more. Uh, one another th- one thing I definitely won't be doing is eating a pimento sandwich. Got absolutely no interest in that. No, Did you not. try it they, last year? No, yeah. they look yeah. even worse in real life than they do in pictures. Yeah, okay, I just don't really understand it, and I, I've, I've tried it, and every year I've been there, I'll try it again, but yeah. no, just can't hang not with for it. me. Mm, no. I am looking forward to the fish tacos. Mm-hmm. It's, there's not much... I know this sounds incredibly yeah, privileged or whatever, but there's not much that I've got left to do at Augusta that I haven't seen or haven't done. Mm. So... I'm now just like, well, what is it that I really enjoy about it? And undoubtedly, the, the fish tacos in the media centre are right up there. I've tried making them a few times over the last year, but I haven't quite they nailed it. They look pretty good, though. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're okay. I haven't quite nailed it. So. so you think you've seen all the golf course that you want to see? I, I've not seen a huge amount of, like, the back end of the front nine. Don't really remember yeah. too much mm. of going to five, six, and seven. It's funny, That's like, one. Th- those are the holes I don't remember from even playing it last year. Yeah. It's just... Well, no, six I do. Five, as I'm one of those ones I have to kind of pause and go, what was it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If, I was, with to, others, yeah, if I was to go like back that. again, I would go and see parts of the course that I don't really have strong memories of just mm-hmm. to, so you can get it in the in the head. Yeah. But, I, you know, I've obviously been to Amen Corner a million times, yeah. but and there's a lot of the back nine because you walk certain poles to get yeah. in back into the clubhouse or the media centre, whatever it is. One thing, actually, yeah. I do want to see is probably the par three course. I've only seen one hole of that. I've not seen yeah. any of the rest of it. Well, they, so. re- they redid it. Was it last year? They yeah. It? So it's pretty cool. So, yeah, I want to see that again. Might, might go and see that. That's a, that was, I, I went down for that last year and it actually is a, is a, it's a very, I think I would call it a pleasant experience. Yeah. Like I was following, I think it was McRoy, Lowry and Fleetwood and they had their kids and you know, it's too wives slow. and girlfriends. The, the actual par three t- tournament itself, it, it, it takes too long. Yeah. It's too slow. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a lot... There's a lot going on, but not any great rush. And yeah. I kind of got a little... I just want to see the course. I'm yeah, a little yeah. bit like, I'm tired of this. But I think if, if I was to go back again, I would probably go and see actual the town, which you guys are mm. going to do mm. for... Uh, should we tell... Or YouTube, you know? Yeah. We're going to go live on YouTube. Well, so, should we tell people our, our plans for next week? We're going to do that anyway. But yep. that's one thing you're going to do is mm-hmm. go down in a bar and take some questions, uh, maybe take some pictures of some of the sites that people don't really get yeah. to see. Because there's parts of Augusta where, you, where it's quite sort of poor. Mm-hmm. It's quite a downtrodden area. And then there's some areas that are really, really pretty upmarket. Very and nice. I, yeah. I would like explore parts of that, mm-hmm. the town. So, yeah. yeah, that's our plan. So for those of you who are interested in knowing what we're going to do next week, Alex and I just intend to bring you as much content as is humanly possible. And the best place to get the majority of that is going to be on our Masters Hub, bunker.co.uk forward slash the Masters beautifully designed by our team and lots of stuff there whether you want the latest news or you want even tea times or you want to know who Rory McIlroy's caddy is more likely Justin Thomas's which we'll come to if you want to read features and deep dives and everything that you want to know about the Masters you're probably going to find on that hub beyond that as Bryce says yeah we'll be doing our YouTube lives which we'll signpost well in advance we'll let you know when they're happening Uh, we've got some interesting plans Alex and I for those we were discussing them yesterday Yep. So we'll be heading, obviously, downtown as well, show you a few of the bars, show you where some people hang out. I'm going to be at Augusta Country Club, you know, the golf club next door, behind mm-hmm. the 12th Green. I'll be there on the Tuesday night, 
as a guest of the DP World Tour. We always do a, a cool dinner. I'll be taking some pictures there. I will show you what that looks like. It won't be on the course, but I'll let you have a, a, a flavour of what it looks like in that club that you've probably heard a lot about, but I've seen very little of. Social media will be all across that, obviously. We've got a daily newsletter that we'll be putting out with all the best content and news Again, it'll be in your inbox every single morning. If you haven't signed up for that already, go to bunker.co.uk and do so. It's totally free. And obviously, Daily Commute Pods will be back by popular demand. 25, 30 minutes of Alex and I, plus some guests, no doubt, along the way, telling you the latest that we've seen, heard, eaten, and such like. So, Lots of food mm, blogs. Lots, yeah, <laughs> lots of food blogs. So we're going to be all across it. Uh, I, I know it sounds like a plug, but yes, it is. There's only really one place to bother going for our master's content next week, and that is Bunkert. So before we get to a bit of an in-depth on the players who are going to be taking part in some of the main contenders next week, there's a few other bits and pieces we should probably cover just before we get there. The course, for example, not as many significant changes as there were last year when obviously we had the new tee, the much mooted, long anticipated new tee on 13, which was a really significant change. The year before that, 11 and, correct me if I'm wrong here, 15, they both changed. This year, the only significant alteration has been to the second hole, which now plays as the longest hole on the golf course. Last year, it was the easiest hole statistically, so lo and behold, they've changed it by moving the tee 10 yards further back and to the left. So that's going to make it more of a a slinging draw hole than it already was. It's very much downhill. It's been a place where if you don't make birdie on it, then you've probably made a bit of a mistake. They always say par fives at Augustus where you make your score. And if you didn't pick up at least a shot on two, then it was a, something clearly awry. Hence why Rory didn't win in 18 when you were last there, Bryce. It's also where we've seen an albatross, for example. Not mm-hmm. a double eagle, don't hit me with that <laughs> nonsense. An albatross by Louis Eustazen years ago, which was great theatre already in the annals of Augusta history. Is this change going to eliminate a little bit of the, the ease of that hole, Bryce? Is it going to dampen the famous Augusta roars, potentially? I don't know that the, the ease of that hole really sits on the approach, uh, whether you land it in the bunker or whether you get the right roll on your uh, uh, roll off the green, or you've got your, the right club. I don't. I mean, obviously your tee shot plays a big role in that, but it will suit guys that get a hit that big sling and draw. I don't think that will really worry Rory. Um, Might play into his hands. Yeah. So uh, ten yards. You know, we we said the same thing about thirteen. We didn't think the big change in 13 was the yardage was, mm-hmm. I didn't really think that was a huge big change in terms of strategy um, so I'm not sure, I, I think it'll, it's obviously, it's not going to affect the guys at the top, they hit it miles anyway, mm-hmm. but it might affect a few of the guys underneath that. Hard luck Mike Weir <laughs> Alex, are you surprised that that's the only significant change that we're seeing to the golf course this year? Well no, not really because they, as you said then, they've been making these changes over the years and golfers haven't been getting particularly longer in the last four or five years. There's only so many changes they can make unless they start going back over these holes again and going, right, we need to add yeah. another mm-hmm. 10 yards. We need to take this hedge out. We need to move. I mean, they're going to end up in, what's the next state? North Carolina. They're going to mm-hmm. end up yeah. over the state well, line. They're having to buy point, other golf courses exactly. to do the work. I, I, I do think there's a... There is a point where it has to stop. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Fred Ridley was pretty aggressive in his remarks a couple of years ago about getting the authorities to do something about a change in technology, mm-hmm. which they have done. Uh, so I, I think they might well have just done their lot, mm-hmm. but there's absolutely no way they'll want to keep doing changes because they, although they are incredibly good at getting things done very quickly, I honestly, I don't know how they do it. I know they've got all the money in the world and all the tech in the world, but it's still impressive. Mm-hmm. It's still amazing how they go through pretty significant changes and it doesn't. It looks like the yeah. golf course has been there for 100 years. 13 last year didn't look like, no. oh, that's new. Yeah. It didn't look like the, the, the new tee was tabbed onto the existing hole. It all just looked like... It's it remarkable one. how they do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think when you speak to any 
I've spoken to a number of greenkeepers who are, or course superintendents, you would say, who are at, at top courses in the UK, and they, they marvel at what Augusta can do. But it's the speed uh, at which they do it. Never mind the result. Mm-hmm. So it is incredible how they do it. But they don't want to keep doing that all the time. And they kind of keep they keep their changes relatively quiet because they don't want to make a big yeah. deal about it because it says it points to a sort of negativity about Augusta that some players find it a little bit easier than it should be, you know. But then that can come back to bite you. Look at Bryson DeChambeau when his comments a few years ago about it being a par sixty seven, and I think he shot. Under. How's he done? Yeah, <laughs> not great. I'm still I think he's got a top ten, and you know. I pretty, think he's only broken the actual par once since he said that. Yeah. Par seventy two, and he's like, oh, it's a par sixty seven. It's not. Yeah. But again, if you think back to when he was saying that, the the the, the whole the whole thought process about um driving and the power game back then was different and then I think back then everyone was really panicking mm-hmm. or, or getting excited about what Bryson could and could and couldn't do mm-hmm. that has completely gone it really has gone has helped the fact that he doesn't play on the PGA Tour anymore yeah. <laughs> but I think that that really championed Fred Rudley to say we need to do something about this the RNA and USG have done it but they're still making slight tweaks to the golf course. Mm-hmm. And as Alex said, I'm not sure that will continue down the line mm-hmm. because it looks as though they're going to bring in some changes. There's going to be a line in the sand, potentially. I mean, you're talking about Bryson there. There's a reason that Charles Schwartz always won this tournament. There's a reason that... Uh, so, Christ, Trevor Immelman, Zach Johnson. Like, There's a yeah. reason why these... People Mike are winning this tournament. Mike yeah. Weir, like it's not a bomber's golf course; it's a mm-hmm. plotter's golf course, and that's yeah. why they do well. It can be. Uh, it, it, you you will get the benefit of being uh, a long player, but Rory was the I think Rory was the second longest on in the Augusta last year. Didn't benefit him. Mm-hmm. Well, he missed the cut, didn't he? Didn't so, benefit yeah. him. So th- it, it's really when I mean, you talk about it being a second shot golf course. There's so much more to. It. I mean, we'll get into. Stuff about you know some stats and whatever, yeah. but mm. you need more than just one aspect of your game to work to to win a green jacket. Spot on. Alex Price mentioned Fred Ridley there. Obviously, that has been the big topic, or rather, the distance has been the big topic mm-hmm. of conversation, and the the course changes that have been required as a result of it. He faces the media every year on the Wednesday. It's funny they clear the the interview schedule on Wednesdays, and it's just Fred. Just him. Yeah. yeah, everyone. You've got some like fifteen press conferences, yeah, maybe not wild. as many as that on the Tuesday. Just Fred on Wednesday, and it's always a fascinating listen, though I think. As I say, recent years, that has been the single biggest topic of conversation, with the exception of Liv um, becoming a bigger deal. What do you expect from Fred's address to the media this time around? Will there be any big announcements, do you think? Is he, he'll, he'll have something up his sleeve, surely. Yeah, well, I think that the Masters in particular and the RNA with the Open have been, what's the easiest way to do it? more welcoming of Liv and this uh, so-called civil war. They, they've been... Uh, welcoming is not the right word. Accommodating. They, yeah, accommodating and perhaps keen to not get involved yeah, yeah, in, was the, was in, the, that, in yeah. the scuffle. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what he says about that. I mean, I th- look, I think we're going to talk about it in a bit, but I don't think Liv Golf overshadowed the Masters last year quite as much as everyone thinks it did. I think that it was a, a huge talking point in the world of golf. So, of course, it was talked about. I don't think overshadow is, is necessarily, necessarily the right word. I thought um, Brooks Kepka's press conference was absolutely fascinating. And I think John Rahms is going to be absolutely fascinating this year for the same reason. Look, Fred, first last year in Fred Ridley's press conference, I walked in and I was stood at the back and he'd already started. And I was stood at the very back because I didn't want to disturb him him anyone and uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry fred. fred just just chill out there for a sec while i find a seat <laughs> seats and i was stood, you got it alex i'll just wait for you i was stood next to a green jacket and i was stood there like literally shoulder to shoulder and he sort of looked at me and, and he went do you want to touch it and i was like oh, please be talking about your jacket and i was like <laughs> Do I want? I was like, Fred Ridley is talking in front yeah, of us, yeah, and yeah. a green jacket is stood next to me, going, "Do you want to touch it?" Yeah. Did he really this say is, that? Yeah, it was a bit. Some of them are quite. It was a like, bit weird. They're quite friendly. It's not yeah. Augusta's not what people yeah, think. We, no, we know that incredible. anyway, but yeah. they are not like. They're everyone imagines imagines them to be like, nineteen ninety two R and A, which is yeah. hello. <laughs> 
you know, you they're not it. like that. They're not at all. And the media are, are, are allowed in the clubhouse, which yeah. a lot of people don't know. And to the, well, in fact, I didn't know until I walked past it, and I went, "Oh, I can go in the clubhouse." Yeah. So I was like, "Yep, I'm going in." <laughs> the only restrictions they've had is the pro shop. Yeah, that's where they've kicked yeah. the media out. We're not allowed in the pro shop anymore. But Thanks to the Japanese media member who bought every single limited edition Master Scotty Cameron and sold them on eBay. Yeah. Thanks, Cheers. mate. Brilliant. Thanks for that. But no, I think <laughs> yeah. to answer your question, the the golf ball rollback is obviously it's still the biggest news, certainly in equipment or for amateurs and the club game in the last X amount of months. It's obviously happened since the last Masters, so it's hard to see that that won't be the main topic especially as as we've just been talking about mm-hmm. augusta are constantly changing to accommodate this yeah so i think yeah i think that's what we can expect from him in terms of announcements you only know, starter sort of, maybe yeah that well yeah i mean i look i was down there for that last year and jack bless him he he can barely get to the mm-hmm. tee he was yeah. he was holding on for dear life as he was walking and i don't know who would you like it to be who would it be oh i've got a name straight away Ben Crenshaw. Yeah, okay. Two-time champion, slots right in. He's in that age bracket. Mm-hmm. I mean, of the multiple Masters champions who you know, could feasibly do that job, he's probably the oldest, which makes him next in line. Yeah. Beyond that, you're looking at somebody like Faldo, I would yeah, expect. Faldo the, is... the sadness is that Seve's no longer here because it could oh. and should have been him. Faldo, is, uh, he's not going to do that. Faldo do you not would... think he will? No. Uh, he might do it in 10 years. Uh, yeah, that's, no, that's what I mean. He's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, but even then... I mean, uh, and then I the can't... likes of Alathaba were still playing. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't true. see I don't see any... I mean, we've been lucky in the last sort of five, six years that we've had quite a lot of big announcements yeah. on the Wednesday, you know, with the Anwa and yeah. we've had the rollback. There's been certain comments about Tiger Woods in the mm-hmm. old days and it's usually Wednesday, you're quite right, the Wednesday is just Fred Ridley Day, mm-hmm. you know, when they make their announcement and they, they'd like to shine a light on what they've got to say. There might come a year where there's nothing really to This could announce. be that one. Could be it. Yeah. And, and we just focus on the tournament. Yeah, quite possibly. Like you, you're the one who brought them up, Bryce, about 10 minutes ago, so let's just deal with it quickly. This is the Masters pod. It's a Masters preview pod, but we have to mention Liv. Um, right. Simply because this was the deadline, wasn't it? The revised deadline for a framework agreement between the three tours to try and, to use Alex's term, shut down the Civil War. It looks like that deadline's going to come and go again, and... Paul McGinley at the weekend was obviously saying it could potentially be years before we get a resolution. How disappointing is it that we've got to this point, Bryce, coming up to the Masters, that the deadline's been missed again, and will it overshadow or impact the, the build-up to the tournament? I don't think it'll uh, overshadow that. I don't think it'll change anything to do with the Masters. I think we've now all got used to the fact that Liv exists in relation to the major championships yep. and the guys who have won major championships qualify. It's it's the rest of the season that it just needs to be resolved. Mm-hmm. Uh, it does slightly concern me that McGinley, who will have an in, that this could go on for years. I'll That caught me by surprise. Yeah, definitely. I'm not quite buying that. I don't see how this can possibly go on for years because some of these guys will never be seen in a, in a major tournament again. Mm-hmm. Uh, which doesn't benefit golf, and I think every every player now, and interestingly on both sides, is saying that we need to get this resolved because the game is not better for it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm not. I don't think it'll overshadow the Masters at all. The good thing, Alex, is that it's the first time since the Open that we've got all all of the biggest names mm-hmm. in the game together again. Yep. I mean, if Liv's had any kind of unintended consequence, it's been to elevate the majors even yeah. further, hasn't it? Yeah, I, I, I'm fully on board with... It's the same with the Ryder Cup. I'm fully on board with it being the 12 best Americans versus the 12 best Europeans. I don't care which tour you play on. And I feel the same about the majors. I just want the best players in the game playing against each other. And if we can't watch that week in, week out, then we can do it four times a year. And brilliant. It just, uh, like you say, it, it elevates the majors. I thought last year was absolutely fascinating. Like mm. Those first few days of the Masters were just... It was, it was almost like chess between Liv and the PJ Tour and then of course the Liv players played exceptionally well last year obviously Mickelson finished very highly Kepka obviously uh, Patrick Reed finished quite well last very year well, think, yeah. he? was he four, mm. fourth yeah. Mickelson was the big surprise I think that mm-hmm. because he's a former champion he was very very outspoken and Liv mm-hmm. 
pissed a lot of people off. And I think in in those in the four events leading up to it, he was twenty six over par. Was he, he really? Was, yeah, he was playing dreadful oh golf. And then you know, just says a lot. That's why Augusta excites so many people mm. because it's a different golf course. It's a different challenge. If you know that golf course, you can get around it. Yeah, hundred percent. That's why Fred Couples finishes top that. twenty yeah. every other year. So that, yeah. that's the thing about Augusta. You just you don't know. You've no idea what Mickelson is going to turn up this year. Yeah. Um, Knowledge is power at Augusta. Isn't yeah, it? Mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. So. Let's turn our attention to a couple of the main contenders. We could go through the entire field, but we won't do that because Alex has done that instead on the Bunkered website. So you can go and check out Alex's full guide to every single player. How have you done it? Have you ranked them from most likely to win to least likely to win? No, so I've, well, I've, I've gone through, I, I have kind of done it in that order. Mm-hmm. So I've started with the legends, the Alathamals, the Weirs and the people like that. I've, I've uh, then I've gone into like the other green jackets, so like the Willets and the people that mm-hmm. aren't going to win this year, but uh, probably aren't going to finish dead last. Uh, I've, I've talked about the amateurs. I've talked about the the players that are just happy to be there. I've gone into and then and then <laughs> when Who, I hold on, who's just happy to be there? Name and shame one. So we're, we're, Peter we're, we've got an insulting <laughs> list. <laughs> <laughs> just happy to be there. That is incredible. Well, this is nice. I am just happy there's to be there. There's a two-footed challenge. But uh, no, and then uh, and then I think, uh, look, realistically, there's only 25 players to choose from when you mm-hmm. when you're picking a winner. Although, yeah. if you said that in 2016, no one's picking Danny Willett, are they? But it it's it realistically, there's 20, 25 players. So those the the, the top 25 players at the moment, it, which is where it stands because it's not published yet, is is where where I've ranked them. Okay. Uh, and I, I've had a bit of fun with it as well. I've, you know, I've taken the piss out of a few players. No, that's not like I've, you. Well, there you go. Uh, Mind you, I hope it's funny. I hope people like when it. When Willett won it, when Jordan Spieth walked onto the 10th tee, I think we need a five shot lead. Mm-hmm. I don't think Danny Willett's mum was thinking Danny <laughs> Willett won the Masters. <laughs> to be quite honest. But that's no, a very uh, good point. Please don't read it. Please don't retweet it because otherwise Bryce will make me do it again next year. <laughs> it's been a significant bullying. undertaking, yeah. hasn't Brilliant. it? That's How good. many words was it running to at the last count? We're at five and a half thousand words Lovely. and I'm not finished. But if you are looking to get a lowdown on players for the Masters, that's the kind of stuff you want. Exactly. And it's going to be brilliant. Exactly. This podcast probably isn't that. We'll pick out <laughs> yeah. a couple of them. And we'll, start, <laughs> we'll start with this guy right here on the cover of our Masters Preview Edition, Rory McIlroy. Because look, with respect to everybody else in the field, once again, and it will be until he wins it, it's all about Rory McIlroy this year, Bryce, isn't it? Yeah. Um, he continues to be a really, I would say, divisive figure because some guys are, are thinking he's got a... Um, He's got a great chance. He could also argue that some of the things he's seen in the last two weeks, maybe not. Oh, go on then. But he is, he's chasing a grand slam. I think this is at the 10th tenth, yeah. tenth attempt at it. For me, I, I think that's got to sit on his shoulders. Um, I did think he had a really good chance a few weeks ago. Actually, maybe more than that. Uh, maybe mid-February. He was in a bit of form. I think his form's tailed off. Mm-hmm. He's not. He's had. I saw that he's had one top twenty in the lead up to the Masters. We don't know what he's going to do this weekend, but yep. he's had one top twenty on no, the PGA Tour. Yeah, yep. no top tens PGA Tour. Um, he's looking probably inwardly because he's gone to Butch. He's looking to get his second opinion. Now, does that surprise you that he's gone to Butch Harmon? Yeah, hundred um, percent. It's the timing that. That surprises me. You think he would do that, maybe close season, but he's. It, it says a lot. But he's not really confident in his form. Mm-hmm. But form is a funny thing at Augusta. Um, I just a bit. I'm a bit up in the air about Rory. I'm not convinced that he's got. Uh, I'm not convinced he's fully confident in himself. They can get the job done. Yeah, I would tend to agree with that because, yet again, this is Rory McIlroy going into the Masters with a new plan of how I'm going to do it. We've had reading these self-help books. We've had, you know, reading these really deep, deep thinkers books. We've had him, you know, saying, I'm just going to freewheel it. Now we've got him going to the most respected and acclaimed golf coach of this generation. He's doing something different every single time he goes there, which tells me that he doesn't really have a clue how no, to, to how yeah. to get this done. And it's not, just, but it's, fine, not, but it's not just off the golf course. It's on the golf course as well. We've had him 
show up at Augusta having only played once or yeah. twice. He's tried playing a handful of times. He's tried playing, well, but what, what is this? Like his eighth start in 13 weeks since he started his, his yeah. calendar year. It's I mean, a that's, lot of golf this year. that's a lot last of golf. year or the yeah. year, year below, he said he'd played that golf course more than any that's correct. Uh, yeah. Augusta before. This time around, he's played it last week, I think it was, and he's not going to go back until late on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. He's not going to play the par three Com- uh, competition this time Rory doesn't have a game plan for the Masters that he sticks a year in year out and you could argue that's fine because he's still trying to figure out how to get it done and until you do it well doing the same you thing you've know. always done yeah, is yeah, definitely yeah. some insanity but one thing Tiger Woods always did was stick to the same routine before every single major he didn't chop it up he didn't change it up if he did we certainly didn't know about it Rory tells all and sundry what he's doing mm-hmm. which just that's why it, we like him of, yeah it, this it is, is honest yeah but it, 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 it certainly doesn't imbue confidence that this is going to be his year there is a part of me that thinks Rory will never get it done at Augusta in the same way that there's a part of me that thinks he's going to win by five next week uh-huh. it's it's fascinating because you just have no idea which way it's going for to go for me it's it's his start it's what he does on the Thursday that will shape his week mm-hmm. um, nine of the last 12 winners have opened with a around sub 70 Um Oh, he's a combined nine over for his last five opening rounds at Augusta. Nine over. Um, the opening rounds of the last 12 winners were 65, 69, 69, 65, 70, 69, 71, 70, 64, 69, 69, 69. He needs to break par at the very, very least. Rory needs a fast start and he's already on record saying that Augusta is a hard course to chase on. Rory is not a particularly good chaser. Mm. He's a good front runner. Mm. And I do get that feeling that if Rory goes out and like John Ram did last year and shot with 65 in the opening round, that was with a horrendous first hole. Four putt at the first, yeah. yeah. he did, yeah. yeah. Rory needs that little bit of f- the, the phew moment to get away from him. Yeah. And go and like, almost like put a marker down to say, I've done it. Mm-hmm. That's one little hill that I have climbed this week. Come get me. Mm-hmm. I, I honestly feel that that's what he needs to do. I'm just not convinced he can do it. Yeah. Because he says, you know, he needs to play like like boring golf, and I, I disagree with that. You don't need to play boring golf. You need to play good golf. Yeah, Augusta does not. It's like that's what Harrington said about the U.S. Open, which is boring golf. Yeah, hundred percent. You do hit fairways, and, and all you hit is greens, and whatever happens with a putter is almost irrelevant at a U.S. Open. Mm-hmm. Or it was when that's the kind of thing that the, that was kind of strategy that we're going down because it's not a big high scoring tournament. Mm-hmm. Augusta is basically. Uh, you got to have every facet of your game needs to work. Mm-hmm. When Rory's on form, he's one of those guys where everything works and it's just a joy to watch. That's not boring golf. So I'm confused why he said that. And that makes me think, like you're saying, you're slightly second guessing him a wee bit. Mm-hmm. But it's a big if. He's got to come out on Thursday and, and play well and, and score well. And then I think it will be a different Rory McIlroy you'll see. But if he is, if he's four or five off the lead, I've struck a worry for them on Thursday. That is, yeah, it. yeah. He's too he's too aggressive. I think we we talked before or mentioned before about this not being a bombers golf course, and I think he does. I mean, just to add to your stats, there, his first like the last five years, his first round average is seventy four, and his second <laughs> round average is just over seventy two. And then, and then it's sixty nine, sixty seven in the third and fourth round. Yeah, which is when when, when the pressure's off. No pressure. He exactly. needs to, he He's needs to get over. once in the last five or six rounds in the Jeez, opening round. Absolutely ludicrous. Poor. So yeah, the guy so, has quality. So he had a sixty five in twenty eleven, which was when he was obviously still a relative upstart yeah. and hadn't won a major yet. And obviously we know what happened then. He had a 69 in 2018. Those were incidentally the last two years he was in the final group on Sunday. Ah. And the only times he's been within three shots of the lead going into yeah, Sunday as well. Obviously, one he was leading and one he was three back. But, uh, I mean, look, in 16, he was... Oh, it was only Jordan Spieth, who, of course, was a defending champion, was ahead of him going into the weekend. He went into Sunday five back. <laughs> I mean, that's brutal. I mean, and he finished that week behind Danny Willett, of course, who won, J.B. Holmes and Soren Kjeldsen. Soren Kelton, who's the shortest hitter on tour. Exactly. I mean, yeah, that, exactly. What does that tell you? Yeah, but yeah, I would say his uh, his those were his only two real shots of. I mean, we look. Someone's going to at me about this, and oh, he finished second a couple of years ago. But I mean that 
that was only thanks to that, that ludicrous door. final round. Yeah. I mean, he was he. I think he was one over yep. going into the final round, and Scheffler was nine under. Yeah. So I think the the three shots that he finished behind Scheffler was the closest he'd been to him since the driving range on Thursday morning. That's right, probably. Yeah. And you make a good point there about that tournament. This time last year, Bryce, before Alex joined us, we're sitting on this Masters preview pod saying Rory's going into Augusta with amazing memories of how he finished last year, not just the 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 round that he shot on the Sunday, but the way he finished pulling out, out of the bunker in that fashion, Colin Morikawa doing likewise, the pair of them high fiving and back slapping, huge roars, and you're thinking but, he's gonna be going in feeling great about himself. Mm -hmm. This year, 180 yeah. degree turn, he missed the cut last year and was almost yeah. greeting. And mm -hmm. he was and if you watch the full swing, you know, his attitude in the or his comments he makes in the in the changing room afterwards says a lot. He's gutted and angry. Mm -hmm. And I'm not convinced he's in any real form where he gets confidence that he can he can do the job. You know, how many times have you seen Rory just, you know, he's talked about bad nine holes that have cost him and he's bang on. Mm -hmm. That, you know, he's he, when, he, when he was having the duel like with Patrick Reed, the first thing he does is fire one into the trees off the first and you think that just, you're not going to get it done, Augusta. Mm -hmm. You cannot make mistakes like that, Augusta. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that it's uh, that boring golf that you, you have to eliminate mistakes, but you need to recover yeah. and you need to go on a run. And it is hard to to get that back once you've made that initial mistake so early. And mm -hmm. I think Rory has cost him countless times. He never He's never enough in the mix on the Thursday evening, enough for, to really threaten people. Mm -hmm. You mentioned this form. We've had a lot of questions from listeners that I'll, I'll read out a few more of them later on, but this is a good time to bring in one from Tom Reid, who says, is this the most under the radar Rory has gone into the Masters, presumably because of his form? Alex, what's your take on that? My, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I fully believe Rory will win a Masters, but I think he'll do it when he's sort of 38, 39 and people have just given up on him. <laughs> and he'll just go into that thinking, do you know what? There's no pressure on me. No one's talking about me for uh, for the first time in, in many years. And actually, perhaps that perhaps that will be the case. Ugh, look, I think, think that will Rory ever happen, realistically? Do you think Rory, if he gets the age of 38, 39 and he's not won a Masters, do you think people will give up? Or will it be a case of this is his last chance or his second last chance? I'm not sure people will ever stop talking about Rory the week but before the Masters until he wins it. I mean, you could argue... OK, we're obviously talking about Rory a lot, but you could argue as... Sorry, did you say his name was Tom? Tom as as yeah, Tom, Tom says there, he is a bit under the radar this year, but, but I think it's mainly because a certain Mr. Scheffler is in hmm. such ludicrous form and can you really see past him winning i mean this is it's 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 tiger woods levels of well he's going to win like no one else is no let's no one that. else has got no, a like chance michael's going to roll that table in a minute <laughs> somebody hasn't subbed my column in the next edition of the magazine <laughs> See, so you stopped just short of saying i was very close yeah, right. i was very careful, close careful yes. now alex careful yeah yeah bryce is rory under the radar no he's not not at all uh, he's very much slap bang in the, the radar. Of the radar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the thing about Rory is that he's a constant question. We yeah. constantly debate it. We we everyone's got so many differing opinions on Rory. Um, I just feel as though, it, it, and he's talked about this as well. It's a mental thing. It is a mental thing. Mm -hmm. He's got the game to play Augusta. He has proven that time and again. But it's not about. Augusta's more than that. Augusta is the full package. Mm -hmm. You cannot have some part of your game that just doesn't quite work. And that could be a mental side of it. Could mm -hmm. be your decision making. He said he's been too aggressive at times. And that that may well be the case. Rory knows more about strategy of playing Augusta than I do. But maybe he's made mistakes in that sense. And, and I get that. And I trust him when mm -hmm. he says things like that. But there's there's no doubt that he is one of three players this year that everyone is talking about. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the next one obviously being Scotty Scheffler, as you said, yeah. Alex. The man to beat, for me, to be completely honest yeah. with you, is, is strokes gained, tee to green, is almost on a different planet to everybody else in, in the field. He's won two of his last three starts. The one he didn't win was last week, where he finished second and was probably just one bad putt away from winning it, to be well, totally. Two bad putts, Two yeah. bad putts, yeah. yeah. He's won at Augusta before, just two years ago. It's hard to see 
past him right now, Alex, adding mm. another green jacket. No, I can't see past him. His, I mean, I've nicked some stats off of Twitter, and it's like 2022. It's called X. Oh, sorry. Jeez. I don't think Elon's listening. I think he's all right. We're, we're always going to call it Twitter, aren't we? We're not changing that for crying out loud. So 2022, he played seven and one three was plus 2.5 strokes gained. One. 2023, seven events, two wins, plus 2.94 strokes gained. Finished tight 10. It's really hard to win the Masters two times in a row. There's a reason why only a handful of players have done it. And obviously only mm-hmm. Tiger and Faldo have done it in... in I say recent times, Faldo was like 40 years ago. Yeah, exactly, but, yeah. Um, but it's, it, and, and that's, and again, that we're going to talk about John Rahm in a little bit as well. Like he's got, he's got a big task. You're talking about players going under the radar. I mean, I don't know if it's just because we're not seeing him week in, week out, but uh, to bring it back to live. But no, Scheffler has been, it's it's astonishing. I mean, I, I said it a couple of weeks ago on the pod that it's, it's quite funny that he seems to just be like the guy between February and April. Like that's when all his wins have come mm-hmm. and it's really strange. But, you know, if you're looking at the, the strokes gained, he is the only player, sorry, one of two players who is in the top 20 in five strokes gained categories on the PJ Tour this year. So that's total, off the tee, tee to green, approach, around the green. And then he's 99th in putting. Mm. Yeah. But but there are 10 players ranked in the top 20 in three or more strokes gain categories on the PJ Tour. And him, do you want to have a guess at who the other player is who has five, who's in the top 20 in five of those categories, five of those six? Oh. Wyndham Clark. Xander Schofle. Xander Schofle. Clark is in four. And then, yeah, and then there's obviously... And Xander Schofle can't close, as we now know. And Xander (laughs) Schofle closes like a revolving door, as you said. But I I think it's worth also pointing out that Schofle is 80th in putting. I mean, only Clark, 12th in putting, and Jordan Spieth, 6th in putting, are worth Mm. talking about out of these players. Like, Scottish, like, it's a cliche, isn't it? The man to beat, the one to watch. I can't see anyone beating him. I I just, honestly, this is the first time... And I'm not going to say the phrase, the cliche, but I am going to repeat, this is the first time I've, uh, ahead of a tournament, I've gone, I genuinely can only see one man winning it. Yeah. And I haven't done that since Tiger Woods. There's this stat, you just compared him to Tiger Woods again. Um, That's twice now. Only six times since 1986 has the world number one ever won the Masters. Now, we, we, we mentioned this mm-hmm. in the pod last year. Mm-hmm. It actually doesn't happen that often. But it has ha- very, very hard to look at this Masters and think there is someone else that's that's going to step up because he is playing such good golf. He really should have... He should be going for four in a row because that last week, the, the just the absolute brain fart just cost him that tournament. Mm, yeah. I mean, that, that was an absolute brain fart. And he will be fuming that that happened because mm. it ruined his stats... It stopped the streak. Mm-hmm. But he's, he, the, by my last count, he was number one in 26 stats categories on the PGA <laughs> Tour. 26. <laughs> he's also number one in the most important when it comes to Augusta leading in, which is Greens in Regulation. Yeah. Every winner is in the top 10 of Greens in Regulation leading into Augusta. Yep. And he's number one. The putting I'm not that concerned about because he's managed to get round it by the rest of his game yep. being so superior mm-hmm. to everyone else and so consistent that he makes so few mistakes mm-hmm. that not necessarily being a great putter is is a huge hindrance to him. But he has picked up strokes since yep. moving to that new putter that he's picked up shot. Now, picking up two or three shots in, in a matter of weeks is a huge amount, yeah. huge amount. It's so hard to look at anyone else and think, yeah, they're going to I also wonder to what extent his strokes gain putting is exaggerated by just how good he is tee to green and approach the green because if you look at the other guys who maybe aren't quite as good you know they'll maybe be giving themselves better looks for their third shot which is their putt and he'll be giving themselves longer looks for his second shot which yeah. is his putt so it is that's why people think that strokes gain putting in particular is, is slightly flawed do you, would you do you know who is first in strokes gain putting this year on the PGA Tour just strokes gain putting in the PGA Tour I will Take a total punt and it's not say, Will Zalatoris. It is Tom Hoagie. 
It's, well, it's not a bad show. Aaron Badley. Yeah. There you go. Nickname dresses. There's one for there you. you are. One of the great golf. And he hasn't had a top 20 this year. So <laughs> there's something in that. Bryce, you, you called it when you said Augusta's a, a second shot golf course. If that logic is going to ring true, then presumably yeah, we might as well just start fitting Scheffler for the jacket well, look, now. Everything <laughs> points to him. He's got form. He's won there before. He's very confident. He's smelling the fake flowers there. <laughs> I did an off microphone sniff. <laughs> an off microphone sniff like he was smelling the azaleas. The plastic roses. Yeah, they're not. They're just, they're, well, they're pretending they're azaleas. Yeah, but they could be yeah. azaleas. But yeah. I like that a little sniff. That was good. Um, everything points to shit. There's nothing that says it's probably not going to be him. I just. He, he drives the ball so well. I was watching him the other night. You think he shouldn't? He shouldn't drive the ball well. He's everything he does with a driver is kind of wrong. The way he yeah, finishes, the footwork, the footwork, everything is untidy. But it doesn't matter. You swing your swing, and he's so confident in himself uh, that I don't think the putting is. I don't think he's worried about it. He never. Yeah. He never. Like the, you should be writing stories about that every week. He's not bothered. I don't think he's a bad putter. No. I think he's just world class at everything mm-hmm. else, which exposes one part of his game that yeah. isn't world class. Uh-huh. But relative to most of the players in the PGA Tour and in professional golf, I think he's he's pretty high up there. What I would say is that, again, not to mention Liv, but I did. There's an awful lot of players playing next week, 13 of them from Liv, whose stats we're not measuring on the PGA Tour. This is so it. we don't quite know just the kind of form that John Ram's in, that Brooks Kepka's in, relative to Scotty Scheffler. We're saying that Scheffler is probably the man to beat and to be honest, versus the fact that we're, he's up against all the other PGA Tour we're players disres- next week. We're disrespecting them by doing that. We've yep. been talking for what, nearly an hour, mm-hmm. whatever it is, and we haven't mentioned Brooks Kepka. We haven't really mentioned any uh, anything to do with uh, John Ram, mm-hmm. who's the defending champion. But those are the only two respect. players from Liv who well, are worth talking about. Cam Smith. Cam Smith's Smith. got yeah. a tremendous Smith, yeah. what master's record. record. He's, got, yeah. well, he's won on Liv. Mm-hmm. You know, John Ram hasn't won a tournament since winning the Masters. Yeah, which so, I find astonishing. I, I, I was convinced earlier on when we were pulling together various bits and pieces, I was convinced that John Ram had won on Liv. Yeah. Now, he's won a team title, which... Let's face it. According to them, is it's a big, big deal. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's the one that's it's, important. It's stunning that he's not won. In but that's months. it. This is the whole thing. That, and and it was last year we we were a bit. Con- that's why everyone thought, how the hell is Mickelson doing this? He's like basically yes. he's playing shocking golf. Mm-hmm. Hasn't really been a figure at any tournament for a while. But then before it, he won a major championship. You know, not that long ago. Yeah, true. So golf is. This is the thing. Golf is in a bit of a mental state right now that it wouldn't surprise me if I would not be surprised if a guy from Live won it. I'm also not going to be surprised if a debutant wins it mm-hmm. because there's a few in the field this year that are playing well, pretty good golf. Let, let's not cover all the parts in part two. Just. Tick, well, okay, but I've ticked a box. <laughs> Sorry. You're teeing us up for the break nicely. But <laughs> golf is a bit, this year's Masters is a bit of a strange one at times. It's I know I said at the start that it could be a kind of the same as last year, but we were thinking about what guys and live yeah. are going to do. And you know, we haven't even mentioned Dustin Johnson. What, how, he's how's, not even in the notes. He's you not know, even in the amazing. notes. How, how's he going to perform? But you don't really know. Out of sight, it's got to go downstairs first. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) If I gave you, if I gave you a bungalow, Dustin, if I gave you Scheffler or a trio of uh, McElroy, Brooks, and Rahm, and you had to choose one of those two groups, picking Scheffler. And any right thinking, right mind thinking guy is picking Scheffler. Exactly. Okay. Anyone in the world. So, Scheffler, so far. We haven't actually made our picks yet for Podder of Merit, but that is coming up in part two. Just before we get to part two, I want to ease us in there with a little bit of a quiz. We did this for our open preview pod last year, and you're working as a team, kind of. Okay. All right, okay. So, starting... We went back through the winners, yeah. Correct. Starting from last year, I want you to work your way back, taking it turnabout, and name the Masters champion. Turnabout, but I'm going to do something I didn't do with the open quiz, and that is if you're stuck, you get one pass. But you have to. One mulligan, sure. One mulligan, yes. It's a a breakfast ball. This could be quite difficult. So you only get one shot at put. Oh, (laughs) yeah. Listen, hide that. I don't want to see any. I want, in fact, fold your laptops over, please, gentlemen. Uh, No no cheating. Hey. Such a bully. Alex. God. 
thinks he's mad. Turn it around. I can't see that, can I? Come on. <laughs> right. 2023, who wants to start? John, John Ram. Ram. <laughs> <laughs> you got in there first place. That's like that. John Ram. 22, Sheff- Alex. Scheffler. 21. Dustin Johnson. Oh, my God. <laughs> And that's the game over. <laughs> is it? Thank God for that. I hate quizzes. 21. You won 21. Right, I'll tell you what. You're out. Let's see how far back Alex can go here. But you you get one. In fact, no, you can have two passes. Oh, no, because it was 20 and Tiger was yes. just putting a thing on him. <laughs> I know who that was. I'll restart again. It was Matsuyama. Fine. I'm in a good mood. On you go. 21. Dustin Johnson. <laughs> 2019, Bryce. Tiger Woods. 2018, Alex. Patrick Reed. Bryce, 2017. We'll give you a clue. You're there. That is Garcia. You just you think that I can't hear you when you're whispering <laughs> through a microphone? Are you mental? <laughs> it's Garcia. <laughs> 2016, Alex. I actually said Sergio. <laughs> Daniel Willett. 2015, Bryce. Spieth. Correct. Alex. 2014. Oh, I've got a lovely easy job here, Bubba. Bryce, 2013. 2013 Masters champion. Oh, my God. You can play your mulligan yeah, if you bit, want. That was a bit of a beige one that year. 2013. <laughs> the greatest Masters winner's photo ever taken. Beige. Play play your mulligan. Be- hold on. Handsome. Beige. That's Adam Scott, but it wasn't beige, it was white. <laughs> But he wears beige, I think, is what Alex is getting. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, that's what I was getting at, so Can't yeah. wait to see the shades of brown he shows up in next week. Uh, yeah, then Bubba again for me. Bubba again, 2012. Bryce, back to you, 2011. 2011. Uh, Cabrera? No. No, Schwartzel. Was that 2011? Yes. The Rory year. 2010. Let's see if, let's see if you can make it back now. I'll, you, you've had a couple Nicholson. of goes, Bryce. I'm going to see if we can make it back um, to 2000. I'm, gonna, I'm really struggling now. Alex, it's on you to get back to 2000, oh, two, 2010. Mickelson? Correct. Cabrera was 09. Yes, 2008. That was... Immelman. Seven was ZJ. Jack Johnson. ZJ. Z- ZJ. ZJ. <laughs> Six was... Not making them any Six cooler. Was, Six was Mickelson as well. Yep. And then there was... Five. And five and four were Tiger? No. Ooh, five no. was Tiger. Four... Mickelson. Mickelson. Mickelson, that was his oh, first. Yeah. Yep. Two, didn't he? Three. Three was Weir. Yep. 2002. Two, Singh. No. 2002 O'Meara? Masters? No, that was 98. Tiger. Oh, it was Tiger. So it was. 2001. Of this. Was that, was one and two Tigers back yes. to back years? Yeah. yeah. And 2000 was? VJ. Correct. Yeah, thank you. Let's not go any further Finish back. My high. God, that was a bit of a struggle. I, th- I genuinely thought, about? I didn't get any wrong. I genuinely thought we were going to make it to like 87 or something like that. It's teamwork, but... Alex. You kind of sucked at that. 87 was Sandy Lyle. <laughs> what? Was, it, was he 87? No, it wasn't. It was 88. 87 oh, was Larry Mice. 88. Before we embarrass ourselves any further, I think it's only right that we throw this over to the break. Loads more to come in part two, including Tiger Woods, various other talking points, and plenty of you, the listeners' questions. Do not go anywhere. Welcome back. Part two of the Masters Preview Pod for 2024, brought to you by the Bunker Podcast in association with Callaway. Michael, Bryce and Alex all here with you. Let's not beat about the bush, gentlemen. Let's go straight to Tiger Woods. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> might want to so, explain why he's burst out no, laughing don't, no, no, no. <laughs> it's not my dad might watch this yeah let's let's skip straight past that double entendre if you're confused in any way go to the bunkered website there's a story there that'll explain all about the uh <coughs> prep prep that tiger is putting in or not putting in this year <laughs> that doesn't make it sound any better to be fair <laughs> let's move past this very quickly tiger woods is expected to make his first start competitive start because let's face it the seminal member guest isn't that big of a deal his first competitive start since february he last played at the genesis invitational the last that we saw him on a golf course in his brand new sunday red gear of course was in the back of a, or in the front of a golf cart looking very unwell left the Genesis after six holes of the second round, and it was subsequently confirmed that it was a dose of the flu. So at that point, we're thinking, okay, Tiger, we'll see you in March, because by his own admission, he wanted to play once a month this year. He's wildly off track on that just now. 
didn't play the Arnold Palmer Invitational, which he's won seven, eight times. And then the assumption was, well, that's fine, he'll play the players instead. His elevated position now in the PGA Tour, presumably Tiger's not going to skip the flagship event. He did. And then people are saying, you surely are over the flu by now, Tiger. So as ever, he's going into the Masters with an absolutely gigantic question mark over him. Will he even play, I guess, is the first question that we've got, Bryce. He's presumably going to try, but because he's a past champion, he doesn't need to confirm like by the Friday deadline beforehand that he's playing. He can show up or not. So first question first, is Tiger going to play? Oh, yeah, he'll play. He'll play. I just don't know how he'll play. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised he didn't play the players, and then I wasn't surprised because that's quite a tough golf course, mm-hmm. and you, you, there's not a lot of leeway. Mm-hmm. If you're not quite on it, he's spoken a million times about his reps, how he needs to get his reps in. However, this part of his career seems to be a massive step away from that. He doesn't appear to need the reps or he doesn't appear to be able to, to do the reps. Um, I have I have no faith that he will really worry the leaderboard, but I can see him making the cut. He knows that golf course yeah. better than anyone else. And that, in some ways, potentially would constitute a good week from Alex making the cut because Tiger hasn't missed the cut at Augusta as a professional. 23 out of 23, he's made it to the weekend. Now, granted, he made it to the weekend last year and then didn't finish the tournament through injury. If you remember, was it Jason Day said that Tiger had a bone sticking out through his leg? Clearly, the his physical limitations, no to be gay, I mean, how how much faith are we putting in what Nota has to say? Like, is, is he really one of Tiger's pals? Did they just room together at Stanford? You know, are they exchanging yeah, texts? How much, how much is Tiger telling him? Is exactly. Him? But Nota's coming out this week and saying, you know, that there are obviously some concerns still. Physically not the man that he was. No great surprise. But, you know, is that good enough for Tiger you, next week just to make the cut? You don't have to have his phone number to know that. Like, mm. you, you looked at him last year at the Masters and and walking down off that first tee into that valley on the first fairway, he just, like, he looked struggling. He looked like he was really struggling just to walk down the hill. And that was before he had to go back up to get to the green. Like, it was, it was to the point where the person I was standing with said to me, I've got a theory that he lost his leg in that car accident and he's actually got a bionic leg. What? Like, that's how stupid this has got. <laughs> bionic leg. <laughs> we need to, we need Nota Begay to uh, confirm whether or not he has a bionic leg. But Walk no, up it's, kicking I think, the boings and, you know, he's got your answer. <laughs> Throw some magnets at him. <laughs> Into the merch shop, buy some Masters magnets and just launch them in Tiger Woods' direction on the range. No, I think that it's... I'm concerned about the the cut run and i think that's about as good as we can say about tight as bryce says he's not going to win he's not going to trouble the leaderboard he's not going to contend that cut run is magnificent tiger will be very proud of that Mm -hmm. record and he will not want to lose it so i think uh, for all of us we're rooting for tiger woods to make a cut that sort of feels a bit weird oh yeah it's definitely not but be expected well exactly but what are you expecting from him I expect him to miss the cut if I'm being totally honest I think this will be the year that it goes there's too many good players in the Masters you don't think he'll get his leg over the line (laughs) (laughs) oh dear are we going to talk about the prep yeah listen he's he's not played enough he's not played a proper (laughs) 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 he's not he's not played enough in terms of like competitive golf, he's not completed a tournament um, since the, the last Masters, which again, he didn't complete. He's played hit and giggle golf with the exception of the Genesis since we saw him at Augusta last year where he couldn't walk and couldn't finish. So hit and giggle golf with the exception of the Genesis, but he had to withdraw because supposedly he had the flu. How can a guy who is that incapacitated rock up at Augusta where, you know, for all the old guys that play there, for all the guys that are amateurs and, and whatnot, he's still playing against the best golfers be in the compe- world. Be that competitive. Yeah. There That's are too it. many players who are better than him right now yeah. and who 
have more, even the run of the mill, if you want to call them that. He's like got, Alex would call them. What was your expression in your your guide? The guys just who are just happy to be, happy to be there. To be there. <laughs> the guys who are happy to be there are better at golf right now than Tiger is. Exactly. He's got so much going for him, Augusta. So much going for him. He's still got his length. He's still got great touch. Uh, he knows that golf course better than anyone else. He's supremely relaxed at Augusta. He doesn't feel any pressure, which is completely different to Rory. But he's got a lot going against him. Mm-hmm. And half of that is the 20, 25 guys that do have a chance at winning. He's just not, he is just not one of them. And it's not one of those ones where you can think, imagine, imagine if he was too off the lead. Nah. Nah, nah. I can't. That Sorry. was the case in 19, but yeah. it's not now. That car accident has... He doesn't look physically healthy at all. He's, nah. His bottom half is very thin. Yeah. He looks, he's, he's a gym rat. And mm-hmm. it doesn't look as though he's able to do the work that he can in his in his lower body. Mm-hmm. So I don't think he's going to make the cut. I think he's probably going to end up having to rebrand it Friday Blue or whatever it is <laughs> because we haven't seen Sunday Red from Sunday Red yet. I mean, which this brand has been around since January, and we don't know what a red polo shirt from well, we Sunday did say Red. That. It's kind of weird to launch a clothing brand and then not play much golf. <laughs> <laughs> that seems kind of odd. Especially on Sundays. Yeah. 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 I, I'm, not, I'm not confident about him at all. And it saddens me though because like Tiger's got so much history with Augusta. You know, five green jackets. He's given us some of the most memorable moments of our lifetime. You know, the in your life, have you seen anything like that? I, I, I can still see that entire seen play out in my head if I don't even have to close my eyes to see it I can still see that whole thing play out and I get goosebumps every time I think about it 19 you know I'm going to be going to my grave probably when the plane nosedives into the Atlantic on Sunday (laughs) I'll be going to my grave though talking to people about my first Masters and seeing Tiger win, how incredible that moment was. There's a reason that people write books about Tiger winning the Masters. There's a reason that CBS in America is airing a special hour-long or two-hour-long production, I think it is, about his win in 19. It's the reason they do it for Tiger and not other people. And to think that he's reduced to what he's reduced to, where we are frankly being probably a little bit disrespectful and churlish about his prospects and his physical state and his everything else on a podcast from you know the deepest darkest glasgow that is quite sad quite honestly but it's a sign of where he is and i genuinely would have been i keep coming back to it but i would have been so much happier had he just retired at the old course 2021 Mm. 150 22 rather 150th open stand on the Spilkin Bridge supposedly your favourite course of all time and just say that's because that's because you want the happy ending not that it would have been a happy ending it would have been an ending an ending and it's the fact it's the constant what ifs Mm -hmm. (laughs) he's giggling you're laughing at that, aren't you? Oh, no, 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 no. You no, two no. honestly I deserve, me. I deserve a medal for getting through this. <laughs> 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 but it's the, it's, the, it's the massive what if with Tiger. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the end. It's his career is not going to, he's not going to say goodbye this year. That's what appears he's to not, be the yeah. case. So every year we just trudge along to the next yeah. withdrawal or the next update. And it's just a bit... It's a bit of a shitty era that we're in. Yeah, it's and funny he appears though. to be hap- quite happy to keep going. He does. And, and it's funny because I've always had it in my head that he's tainting his legacy by struggling on and withdrawing and whatnot. But then I look at somebody yeah. like Andy Murray, who I'm an abs- I'm probably the world's biggest Andy Murray fan, and I look at him battling on with his metal hip. He's had surgeries for days like Tiger's had. He's half man half metal like tiger is or so alex would have us believe you know andy murray doesn't need to carry on playing tennis he's said that this summer he'll he'll mm-hmm. bow out but he's had to deal with people saying just quit just quit you're tainting your legacy uh, a reporter at the bbc wrote a blog which andy murray bristled at Kerry saying he's tainting yeah Kerry Dean Edson, saying that andy murray could be tainting his legacy here i bristled when i saw it because mm-hmm. i'm like Andy Murray's doing no such thing. I don't think. But I don't think is. about Tiger in no. the same respect. And it's, I've always thought Tiger, you don't need to do this. Please just leave us with the good memories. I never thought the same about Andy Murray in their equivalent positions. Because of that piece by Kerry Dean about Andy Murray, I'm slightly changing my perception on Tiger. I don't believe he is damaging his legacy, 
but I've seen enough. Is that I don't want to see more. I don't want to see this icon struggle. Is that because we grew up in the Tiger era? We saw him at his absolute best. I'd be really interested to hear from Bryce's perhaps, dad, the, or yeah, or even same thing with Sammy. But I, I was going to go the other way, like a younger golf obsessive right, okay. who didn't grow up watching Tiger win yeah. week in week. Bobby Boy still wants to see Tiger on the telly, and it's this. It's, Does he really? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a similar ten. thing with Sevy. Sevy ended up honestly embarrassing himself towards him because mm. his game was just gone. Tiger's not the same. Tiger's not in that position. It's not where he just can't play anymore, and and it, it's he, he's his forms out the window. Tiger still, I mean, from what we have seen, glimpses of him, he's still got game. Mm-hmm. It's the physicality of the sport that's troubling him, and it's almost like he can't, he won't accept that that physical nature of golf now is not mm-hmm. is he's not able to. It's, it's what we were saying he needs about both parts, doesn't he? Because I, I hear people say he's still got all the shots, he just can't walk. I'm like, that's a pretty bad yeah. thing. You know, he, he needs yeah. to be able to walk in order to win. So he can have all the shots he wants. If he can't walk, he's not going to win. Yeah. And if he can't win, why is he there? Yeah. Well, exactly. He, he always says, I'm not showing up to a golf tournament unless I believe I can win it. So he obviously believes he can win the Masters. Yeah, I, I, there's always but there's a, re- like, there's a reason he's why never, he's never going to... Tiger Woods is just yeah, never going to set next to a green jacket and say, so I can't win this tournament. I'm probably not well, going to no win this would, week. Would like Peter uh, Malnati's uh, not going to say yeah, that either. It destroys, true. <laughs> He's getting uh, he such might, a well, According to you, probably will say that. <laughs> <laughs> it destroys all the aura of that we love about Tiger. Yeah. And I, I've i always said, I, I think he loves the drama. Mm-hmm. And I think, the, unfortunately for us as guys who like Tiger and love, love the whole thing about Tiger, that drama is going to continue for a few years, but it's not going to give us any kickbacks. No, it's we've seen it all now. We've, yeah. it's, we've seen the best. We're now just going to have to. When something when something great happens, you're led to believe the fairy tale happens and then it ends. Mm-hmm. And now we're getting to see what happens when the cameras stop rolling, effectively, isn't it? Yeah. Which is it turns out it's not that great. <laughs> 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 Let's talk about uh, a few of the other players that are in the field uh, quickly. Like John Ram, defending champion, and we've you know barely spoken about him. To use Tom's Tom Reed's expression about Rory, John Ram for me is definitely flying under the radar. But is that a consequence of where he's playing rather than how he's playing? Because out? we're not seeing him week in week yeah. out on the PGA Tour. So, when did you last see John Ram hit a shot? It was probably I tuned in for his first live tournament, and I watched the start of that. So it probably was actually that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't recall tuning in on the last day. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I tuned in any second but event. It's, yeah, it's, I remember watching that, but it's a totally different type of golf, yeah. and they talk about it being that the whole environment of live is very, very different. The whole scene is very different. I, don't, I cannot compare that to Scottish Scheffler last week. It's just not the same. No. The pressure just isn't the same. Um, the way they all behave at the end on a Sunday when three of the guys in the team have lost and they're all cheering about throwing That's champagne over point. each other. Yeah. I, I'm just yeah. not buying that. I cannot... He almost... I mean, we, we mentioned it before where we said that we were surprised by the fact that he hasn't won since last year's Masters and then we re- recalled that team win and it was like, and, and that brought back that flood of memories where he was seemingly embarrassed by celebrating that mm-hmm. team victory because look I mean he was he was pretty outspoken about Liv before they waved that big cha- uh, check under his nose and you know the, the team aspect of things and the 54 hole shotgun start he didn't like any of that so but look we're not here to talk about Liv but I, I I did actually go back over the last 50 years of how runners up get on uh, sorry how champions get on uh, in their second year in their defending year mm-hmm. so to speak and if I actually, if I just, even if I just go back to the, uh, to 2000, obviously I mentioned Tiger Woods before has gone back to back. There's only one other player who's finished. So we had Jordan Spieth in 16, finished second. Yep. And Scotty Scheffler finished 10th in 22, uh, sorry, in 23. Those are the only two players yeah. that have finished in the top 10. The av- of the last 50 years, there's been 11 missed cuts from defending champions and the average finishing position is 13th. It's, quite so it's not easy to defend. I mean, there's, there's, there's obviously a lot of there's extra... There's a reason why it's not done. I think it has to be the extra pressure 
mm-hmm. hosting a dinner, paying Ho- for dinner. Host, having to pay <laughs> what probably is going to be like a £1,500 bill, because Gary Player will order some Ponzi red wine. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you gotta pay Give me the oldest Rioja you've got. you got to pay for Jack's steak. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to hire the, 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 the chef. And so, so there's obviously little things that make that week a little bit, but it is a really weird stat. Yeah. Um, and considering you've won it, you've tasted success at Augusta. So the, I wonder if it's the pressures off next year that you need mm-hmm. to go and win it. Yeah, it's a bit. Of, it's a really weird. Is it maybe a bit mythologized though as well? Because it's not often you get a player winning a major back to back, regardless anyway, of the major. Yeah. You know? Well, who's the last person to do it? Kepka. Kepka probably. Kepka? I mean, he was the first to win the U.S. Open back to back mm-hmm. since Curtis Strange in the eighties. Yeah. I think the Open, Harrington. Oh seven oh eight. That's right. So it's, yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, not something that, that happens all that often. Mm-hmm. No. The the law of averages dictates that you probably won't do it before you add in the, the additional factors. If anyone's going to do it, I mean, I feel like John Ram's probably got a reasonably good chance. I, I, from what I gather from people who do follow Liv, who even some of the people who gather stats for Liv, his game hasn't fallen off a cliff since. No, John, John Ram has not. It's not similar to Mickelson. Yeah. John Ram was playing some superb golf last year. Um, uh, he hit every fairway in his opening round last year. He shot 65. <laughs> he was absolutely sparkling. Um, and he's only been on live for a matter of months. He's yeah. only played a few tournaments. Yeah. This is not a big escape. He's not had to wait six months to start. So he's only been away from the PGA Tour for a little while. And a lot of the times, that the, the time that he moved, he might have sat out a lot of events anyway. Yeah. So I'm not... I'm not that worried about where John Ram's game is going to be. The one thing is I wonder if someone will piss him off in the press conference, to be quite honest, because mm-hmm. he's going to face some... That'll be you, yeah? Yep. He's going to face <laughs> some some press that he hasn't faced before <laughs> on a stage where he is the defending champion. And that's going to be interesting to see how he reacts to that. That's a good point. For a lot of the media as well, it'll be their first time seeing John Ram since he moved to live, and there mm-hmm. will be some questions I'm sure people will have. Well, Kepka's, uh, I mentioned Kepka's press conference last year, and that was mainly fascinating because someone, I, I can't remember who it was, said, do you have a slight tinge of regret about going to live, basically? And the best thing about that was that uh, Kepka was sort of implying in his answer that, yeah, actually I do. Like, yeah. if I if I hadn't had this injury... Then I probably, I mean, th- let's not forget, we've all seen the full swing uh, episode of his in season one. The guy was miserable. The guy yeah. was thinking that his career was over. And realistically, Kepka's a player that should have a green jacket by now. I, I absolutely fully on the Kepka train. I think he will be. Not this year because it's Scheffler, but <laughs> maybe next year. But it's, yeah, R- Ram is going to have to field those same questions mm-hmm. in this press conference. Like someone um. is going to say to him, Possibly me. I might do it. You have <laughs> do won you, since last year. Do you year. regret going to live? Yeah. Yep. And I that think you're more likely to say to him, do you put jam on your scone <laughs> before cream, or is it cream then jam? But he's also, go- he's not been like Kepka, where Kepka's yeah, yeah. been quite honest and said, yeah, I took the money. Yeah. If you watch some of the stuff on Liv's website where they've done, a lot of it doesn't get seen, but when you dig into it, there's interviews behind the scenes and like, it looks like a nightclub. Yeah. And he's wearing like a t shirt and he's been interviewed by some guy. He's quite pro live. It's mm. propaganda, Ram. isn't it? Yeah. A little bit of pro- you said that word, not me, <laughs> but it's a little bit like that. So I'm wondering he has what he's going to be. The Kool-Aid. Yes, yeah. I'm wondering he has cashed that check <laughs> and agreed to all terms and conditions. So it's going to be interesting to see what he's like. Yeah. But he hasn't won since the Masters. Yeah, it's very true. Apart from the team event. So Mike, Mike McAllister, who is the uh, content director for Live yeah, Golf or whatever, editorial his, director, whatever his yeah. job title is. So he put out the strokes gained stats actually, which are pre the Miami event, which is happening this weekend. And John Rahm and Wacken Neiman are the only players who are plus two or better strokes gained. So he's playing good golf. Like there's no, like as you say, it hasn't fallen off a cliff no, the way Mickelson has. No, it definitely hasn't. But Golf course is a half the size. Though. What Justin Thomas would give for a bit of John Ram's form at the Absolutely. moment. <laughs> I mean, we, we can't ignore Thomas. He missed three out of the four major cuts last year. The only one that he made the cut in was his PGA Championship title defence. I think he was tied for 64th. So effectively last of those that made the cut. 
and he's just well, he's started this year pretty poorly as well. There were early signs at the start of the season with, I think, a couple of top 10s back-to-back. Mm-hmm. But since the Phoenix Open, which I think was the most recent of those, well, he's missed the cut at the players. He's coming off the back of another tied 60-something th- at the, the Valspar Championship. He missed the cut at the Genesis, of course, you know, which is great pal Tiger hosts. Be interesting to see if they're partnered together. I don't think Augusta really goes in for that. No, they so, don't hang yeah. with that. No. no, but yeah, Justin Thomas's form was terrible last year, and there's not been that much sign of improvement this year. And of course, this week he's just dispensed with Jim Bones Mackay as his caddy. He'll go into next week with is it Matt Minister who used to caddy for Patrick Cantley? Okay. Caddied for Cantley when he won the Tour Champs in 21. Anyway. It's a strange time to be making a caddy change, Bryce, is it not? I think he's obviously making a big decision to try and kickstart something, uh, get a bit of freshness, going into... Major uh, season. Major mm-hmm. season. Um, but, I mean, his game's all... late. Uh, to be fair, his game's all over the place. Um, and he's obviously realised that. His form's shocking. He's got no confidence. He's not got much to go back on. And I'm... Uh, <laughs> I really like Justin Thomas. I'm a big Justin Thomas yep. fan. I think he's a hell of a player when he's on it. Unfortunately, he's one of these guys when he's off it, he's miles away. Whereas there's some guys that can be off it and just hang around. He doesn't seem to have that. He's a off the face of the planet guy. Yep. Um, Has he reached out to you for any advice or words of encouragement? Not or yet, like no. That? no. <laughs> not yet, no. no. I still think the funniest thing ever when I was playing with him and his dad was giving me some tips and his dad was filming me on his phone and then going through his phone and he could see Justin Thomas he's swinging then mine <laughs> <laughs> and I thought he's going to delete that <laughs> so I think and, and you know that's the thing it's a hard thing you you, you feel for him because his dad's a very well respected yeah. coach and it, so it's this, to me it's just he's lacking confidence okay. and I think the Bones move is probably a good move because it will change his mindset so what he's doing isn't to. working, so something has yeah. to change. Why not? You yeah. know, a lot of players have done that. We've had that a million times with Rory McIlroy about Harry, but Rory's always come out the other side, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm, I hope uh, JT does too. The yeah. caddy is always the easiest person in your team to get rid of. Rid of yeah. I feel it's certainly easier to suck your caddy than it is suck your dad. Yeah. yeah. So Alan Shipnick said this on Twitter the other night as well when Justin Thomas made this move. He's like, well, something has to change when you're struggling. It's either the caddy, the coach, the agent or the wife. And the caddy's <laughs> the cheapest. Let's be honest, there's no alimony or se- severance fees that need to be paid to that person. It always but, feels like it always feels like JT is never really in the conversation as a Masters winner. It always like he hits it miles, he hits it high, he hits a draw, like everything. Oh, he sh- everything like, I, point you can it. see him, I, you can picture him in a green jacket, and yet there's always four, five, six players, and perhaps this year as many as 16, 17, ahead yeah. of him in the conversation. Quite possibly. That thing that we're discussing there between uh, Bryce and Justin Thomas playing with him and getting lessons from his dad, if you're watching this on YouTube, go and check out our other videos. You'll see... Bryce playing with Justin Thomas at the Scottish Open Pro-Am a few years ago, so it's well worth checking that out. If you're listening to this, then keep listening and watch it afterwards. Most likely to win their maiden major next week. There's a lot of guys going in who are in the top 10, 15 in the world but haven't got a major championship to their name just yet. I'm thinking, you know, Victor Hovland, Xander Schofley, Tyrrell Hatton, Patrick Cantley. Are we going to see a first-time major champion next week? Bryce, your thoughts? Without well, asking you to name your, your pick, obviously, just Probably yet, the best chance for a few years, I, I do think. You know, uh, Ludwig, Yeah, you know, that could be a bit of a bombshell. He, he is a class act, there's mm-hmm. no doubt about it. He has just become really accustomed to life at the top. Um, it wouldn't surprise me. It would surprise me, but it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. But honestly, to me, one of the, I think, if you had to pick 10 guys that you thought would do well at Augusta, I'm picking Wyndham Clark. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, he's a good driver of the ball, great iron player. The only thing that makes me slightly concerned for him is he's not a particularly, he's not getting a really awesome short game. Mm-hmm. And Augusta's, you know, pretty tricky. Mm-hmm. He's already got the experience, of course, of being a major champion now, yes. Wyndham Clark. He does look like a big time player, though, doesn't yeah. he? For all the silly things that he says, he's he, turning into a big, yeah, big time player. He certainly is. If. Clark or Aberg, Oberg, sorry, were to win, Alex, then obviously there goes the old Fuzzy Zeller stat as well. <laughs> the, the the first player, to, or the most recent player to win the Masters on their on the, debut at Augusta, yeah. back to the 1979 
listen, there You're are reasons. to lose that joke, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure Fuzzy Zeller would be absolutely <laughs> gutted because people still got the heli on TV much. though. I can still kick about <laughs> with that. I, yeah, if you're if you're giving me Clark or Aberg, it's it's Clark for me as well. I mean, this guy again to go back to strokes gained four, a twelfth in putting, third in total, fourteenth off the tee, eleventh tee to green around the green, seventy fifth. So just absolutely yeah. talking mm. to your uh, it, it, stuff about his shocking short game. He seems to have sorted out his. What's the best way to put this? Actually, I'll just say it. Anger issues. He had really bad anger problems, and that's why he couldn't get over the Who, line. Wyndham Clark. Yeah. <laughs> he sorted those out, uh, which is, oh, as we know from... I uh, can't imagine being terrified of Wyndham Clark. I don't <laughs> I know. know, I know. He doesn't strike me as the sort of guy who's, I don't know, volcanic. Oh, no. no, definitely. Or is it just, is it, has like he it, fits more than that? He's absolutely the guy who starts a brawl in a bar and then just sort of slinks off and lets his mates all pile in. <laughs> Wyndham Clark? Yeah. Really? He, I'm you're the same as me. I'm I can't even imagine Wyndham Clark in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, picking a fight in a bar. No, he 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 starts a row with someone way bigger than him, and then just slinks off and lets his mates get involved, yeah, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. Um, Do you think a, no, a, a guy who's not in form could win? There's only one guy in the last what ten years, Matsuyama, who wasn't particularly in form that won the Masters. Usually, guys tend to have top tens uh, and a bit of form. Yeah. Uh, and I'm thinking potentially Tony Fino. Maybe it's not that great, but stats aren't horrific. He's had four top fives in the majors. He's played 30 majors, four top fives. He's had 10 top tens. He's missed just six cuts in 30. And he's made the cut in all four masters and had three top tens. Augusta's uh, pretty much suits for now. Yeah. But I'm wondering if he's run past that stage of being picked by people because he's not a lot, lot yeah. not in a lot of conversation sort of killer at the instinct as well i just yeah. kind of sometimes thinks lacking in him a touch of the ricky fowler is like really really nice guy but everybody knows how nice a guy tony Fino nobody is. So wants if you see him on the a leaderboard, touch of the ricky fowlers <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean if, if you see tony Fino on a leaderboard or chasing you on a leaderboard are you intimidated yeah it's not the same as if it's brooks kepka or john ram yeah. or peak tiger effectively I would almost put Rory towards the, the Tony Fino bracket as well, of just really nice and where's it? really a little bit as a Rory fan. As a You're Rory fan, that? yeah. Just trying to it's a reverse psychology, basically. If I if I say it enough, he'll go out and win it and prove me wrong and yeah. have, have an apology to make. So yeah, Fino's a shout of those players that are not on form. I guess Cantley as well. You know, he's not had any great form really this year so far, but good record at Augusta almost ruined the Tiger story in 19 of course with his charge and wouldn't it just be like the thing for Patrick Cantley after oh, all of the noise towards the tail end of last year since the last major mm -hmm. if he shows up and, and wins a, a green jacket so we'll see and you're not allowed to wear a hat with a green jacket as well that's one of the rules that'll, which, suit, him. Yeah, that'll suit him right down to the ground dark horses we can't ignore them for me there is one massive dark horse, a name that we probably wouldn't have discussed otherwise, but maybe we should have because he's a major champ and I think his game is perfectly suited for Augusta and his stats this year are pretty damn special. Shane Lowry. Mm -hmm. yep. um, I don't gamble, but if I did, he would be an each way bet for me all day what long. What is he? Quite long. I think he's towards the 50s. You can look that up if, if you want, Bryce. But yeah, I, I think... I look at Lowry's game, don't see any particular weakness. And I think he's now a guy who's really a lot more comfortable in his own skin than he was mm -hmm. even a couple yep. of years ago. That's what winning a major and a WGC will do for you. But I also think that's what having a, an elevated role in an event like the Ryder Cup will do for you. He performed so well in debut in 21 in a defeat and then was one of the sort of weirdly more sort of senior figures on the European team in Rome stepped up, played great golf, behaved like an on-course leader. He was the guy that was standing between Joe LaCava and the rest of Europe, never mind the European <laughs> team. He looks like a guy who is... Between Bones and Rory as well. Yeah, essentially, yeah. He looks like the kind of guy now who has finally found his feet in his place at the top of the game. I'm, I'm like, I would love to see Shane Lowry win the Green Jacket. Yeah, yeah. I would like to say European. You know, yeah. that's, that's, I, mean, I know yeah. John Ram went to... Live and I get all that. I still want to. See, if, if it was him or Scheffler, I, I'm sorry, but I'd want to see John Ram. I mm. want to see a European do well. Just that selfish. Lowry's 45 to one, which is pretty good. That's very good, isn't it? Lowry good, is yeah. just because I've done all this uh, strokes gained research. Lowry is seventh total, fifth tee to green, third approach, 
a hundred and second putting, but I, I honestly, it's no we, different. Really first of all, though. we've discussed the the issues with strokes gain putting. Yeah, but also the top guys in strokes gain putting who are in the field are my boy Mal Natty, Matthew Pavon. <laughs> Nick Taylor, Sam Burns, Denny McCarthy. No, like right there, Nick Taylor is a great shout as a long shot. Yeah. He is playing such playing good Playing really golf. good, confident, nothing to lose. No weaknesses. Happy to be there. Happy to be there. I love a bit of Nick Taylor action. But, you know, you've just, you've just read out Shane Lowry's stats there. Now, if, I, I'm, I'm, if you're going to gamble, gamble responsibly, blah, 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 when the fun stops, stop. All that stuff. I don't gamble. I don't like it. I hate it. If you are looking for value in the field then it's Shane Lowry over Scotty Scheffler all day long. Scotty Scheffler is how long, Bryce? What, was he 9-4 to four or something like that? 7-2. 7-2. to two. His odds are comically short. And there's Shane Lowry, who is basically the next best to him in four categories, and he's 45-1. to one. Mm-hmm. I, I know where I'd be putting my cash, if I did, but I don't. I'm going to go with Siwoo Kim, please. He's incredibly consistent. Is, is this because of lunch? No, no, no. We we saw a sign on the way back from lunch that said C Wu on it. I'm not sure what. what it's a restaurant. Yeah, it's oh, a restaurant. Yeah. Okay. Fair. So there's a restaurant near the office called C Wu. And as we were driving back, I pointed and it went, oh, there we yeah, go. I hate to tell you this, but it's gone out of business. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's gone to win the Mist Masters. <laughs> Mist cut. No, so incredibly consistent. Just off the back of a tied three at the players. Uh, incredibly well on strokes gained. Hasn't missed a cut yet, yet this season. Feels like he's due that career-defining win. Is he still using that broomstick? I think I hope so. so. But no, he's, again, so 11th SG total, uh, 13th off the tee, 3rd tee to green, 20th around the green. He's just He's incredibly consistent. He's playing well. I just, there's something about him that I... I really like, and I could, I can absolutely see him. It, I mean, it would be it would be incredibly boring for him for Siwoo Kim to win, not for the continent of Asia, of course, but uh, for for is, the rest is, of us. His temperament's be... too suspect for me. You reckon? Yeah, I don't think he's got the the most even of keels. I think that's probably what's held him back a little bit up till now. But then again, it's how you channel it, I suppose. Like Wyndham yeah. Clark, I, it's a revelation John in Rahm's this podcast a Masters that champion. Wyndham Clark is... Uh, Semi Ballesteros is a Masters champion, if we're yeah. talking about people who had dodgy temperaments. But we're not surely comparing Sibu Kim to <laughs> Semi Ballesteros. <laughs> we, 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 we are not. We are not. We are not. I think a dark horse, Brian Harmon. Really? Yeah. Can, yeah. Can, a, can the most recent major champion be yeah, a dark yeah. horse? Well, yeah, Left because Hander. you haven't mentioned him yet. So <laughs> <laughs> Left Hander, yeah. he's just yep. not, he's not the longest, but every other part of his game is pretty good. Yep. And he's been fairly solid this season. So, uh, good yeah, show. could be a good one. Yep. 45 to 1. I'm taking Lowry. Tom Hoagie, who I mentioned earlier, has, again, his stats are sneaky good this year. And uh, Nick Taylor. I think there's a value to be had throughout them all. Was well, that time of the show, gents, where we now have to make our predictions and stake our reputations in Podder of Merit. There are points up for grabs as well as bragging rights and all that sort of stuff. A reminder that our last event in Podder of Merit, which was the second event of this particular season, was the Valspar Championship a couple of weeks ago. We mentioned this in the pod when you were off, Alex, but it's fine. We'll we'll give you your little moment because you won the two points with my man Nick Taylor, funnily enough. So Valspar Championship, Bryce, you picked Spieth. He missed the cut. I picked two-time champion Sam Burns, who missed the cut. And Alex, you picked Nick Taylor, whose tie for 64th was enough to get you two points. So, as it stands in Podder of Merit right now, Bryce, you're on three points. Alex, you're on two. And I am on one. And the picking order, which is all important for the Masters. Alex, you go first. Bryce, you're second. And then it is me. So, Mr. Perry, it's over to you. Scotty Scheffler. There's no point in like overthinking it. I've, I, I, I said to you clearly when we, when we were we when we went out for lunch just before we recorded this. I, I said to Michael, I think I spend an unhealthy amount of time thinking about my Potter of Merit pick <laughs> when the reality is doesn't mean dick all. It really doesn't. It do, like we don't even play for a prize or any kind of forfeit or anything. Pride. So Pride. it's Pride. just a pride thing. But no, this is it, there's. 
I've got a couple of other players in mind, but this is it would be ludicrous. If I if I didn't take Scheffler, you'd be sitting there going, Oh well, I'm gonna have to take him. So Yeah, see I'm having to pick a live player because I'm not getting that many opportunities in Podder a minute with a live player. So See that's tactical. I, like I can that. use Scheffler another time. And I've already won with Scheffler, yeah, so, so I can still keep him in, so in my back him. pocket, although you get the honour this week, luckily. Um so I'm picking Brooks Kepka. But that is what I was going to do. That was the, the you have exactly Until taken my you exact... thought there's too much strategy in it. Yeah. And you threw it out the window. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I'm going strategy. You picked my Kepka. guy. Yeah. I wanted Kepka, even over Scheffler. My order was Kepka, Scheffler, and then, well, whatever else. <laughs> Whoever so is just happy to be there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that to you at some point next week when we're walking from like the fifth to the sixth. Because you know what, Alex? I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> and so is Rory McIlroy. <laughs> uh, no, I, I can't see past either of those two, really, in terms of realistic chance to win. The next obvious is probably John Ram. We haven't mentioned Wacko Neiman really either. But oh golf gods, I hope you're listening. Rory McElroy. Yeah. Go on Rory. Alright. Because think how good that'll be. If he wins oh, the green yeah. jacket, I get to see Rory win the, the career Grand Slam, which will be lovely for him. I'll get three points. I'll move to the top of the table. You get to use them next and week. And I get to use them next week. Yeah. So Do you think you'll tell him in his post tournament press conference? I'll just, just put your hand text. up. Yeah. <laughs> Rory, just guess what? <laughs> not to pile the pressure on too much, <laughs> but <laughs> So there you have it. Alex, Scotty Scheffler, Bryce Brooks Kepka, and me, Rory McElroy for the pod of merit. Bryce currently leads three points. Alex two and me one. Usually at this point in the show we would do honesty box, but because it's the Masters and we've frankly discussed every single thing there is to discuss about the Masters. What sandwich is your favourite? And so on and so Egg forth. Salad. Barbecue. Egg salad, yes. You know, we talk about, the, like, every, I say we, everyone wangs on about how <laughs> cheap everything is and those sandwiches. And I hope they're not listening, but there's a reason they're so cheap and that's because you have to eat, like, six of them for them to touch the sides. Like they're t- they're basically sliders, aren't they? They're like this big. No, they're not that. The barbecue small. sandwiches are. The barbecue sure sandwiches, the sandwiches. The barbecue sandwiches are tiny. The egg, like the egg salad, salad's I pretty chunky. It's what? It's about that size. It's not that size of a coaster. It's when you when you're walking, you buy two of them and it's still. You can buy two of them. It's still yeah. cheap. Oh, yeah, it's cheaper I'll, than a Greg's. Of course, it. <laughs> it's, it's, better than a Greg's. it's better than a Greg's. Are you comparing? <laughs> the, the first time I was there in, in 19, I was totally bamboozled because you go up to like the grab and go section that they've got in the media center, and it's like stealing. Yeah, yeah there's that. Weird, but I, I picked up, it said like chicken biscuit, and I thought, well, that sounds vaguely interesting. Try anything once as long as it's not got cheese in it. Went back to my desk, opened it up, and, and it was like fried chicken. With nothing, no sauce, no anything, just a, a a a chicken breast, deep fried, in a scone. Yeah, it's a scone. Yeah, yeah. I was completely, yeah. completely confused. They also do trail mix, but they mix it in because it's America with M and M's. Phenomenal, <laughs> absolutely world class. Do you know what this healthy snack needs? <laughs> 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 so yeah, look, we would we would do honesty box at this point, but we've covered uh, an awful lot of ground on various podcasts over the years. So instead, I've thrown it open to you lot listeners to send in some questions for us, and you know I'll, I'll put it to the guys. First question from Jay Houston, and Jay is watching clearly the Augusta National Women's Amateur Anwa to give it its Ponzi Golf Media title, and. Asks, in all seriousness, is Annabelle Pancake the best name in golf? <laughs> I know. Absolutely. That is incredible, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant. Annabelle Pancake, a contender in the Augusta National Women's Amateur this week. I'm trying to think of a better name in golf. I'm not sure there is one. No. It probably is Annabelle Pancake, yeah. to be Pancake. fair, right now. She wins. I mentioned Wacko Neiman just before there, and at Eat and Sleep Golf on X says, is it time for Neiman to stand up and be counted? We know how good he is. There's lots of fuss, including from the player himself, about world ranking points. And there were lots of calls demanding his invite to Augusta prior to him getting it. Is it time for him to perform in a major, Alex? I'm going to have to make a horrible confession here. I didn't listen to the question because I was (laughs) Googling this man. 
Oh my word. That For is, the benefit of listeners, that is a brilliant. Alex has answered the last question perfectly. Annabelle Pancake is not the best name in golf. It is Spaniard. What? Roderick Bastard. Roderick Bastard. Spaniard. That's a great name. Well, how an, he must work in I'm trying to... a resort somewhere in Spain. There's no way he's on tour. Right. He's on the PJ Tour. Yeah, page, he's but listed, he any... but he can't be active. No, surely no, not. He's not. He's not active. No, he's I not. feel like he's fifty. Something. He's fifty-two. Roderick 52. bastard. Roddy <laughs> bastard. Roddy bastard. <laughs> Our bastard. <laughs> Sorry, please repeat the second question. <laughs> is it time for Neiman to stand up? I'll and be answer it for him. Yeah, on yes, hundred percent. Yeah, of course, it is. He's been the one of the the faces for live in the last eight months. Um, but Probably again, form player. Yeah, he's a lot. A lot of pressure on him. Um, because he's playing, uh, I should say, I don't want to say a type of golf, but as you would call it a type of golf that's not 72 hole stroke play. Mm-hmm. So he's got to come to the big stage. Admittedly, on that big stage, he hasn't really done a huge amount as yet. So he's their poster boy, mm-hmm. and all, almost to the point of it being slightly ridiculous that he's their poster boy, mm-hmm. considering the talent they've got. But yeah, I, I've, he's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders and he's in, big time. on an invite as well. Yeah. That's the thing, you know. I mean, they all are, but you know what I mean. He, he shouted. He, mm-hmm. he made a lot of noise. He wanted an invite. Liv wanted him to get an invite. He got it. I mean, that's he's now brought an awful lot of pressure on himself that you know he maybe didn't need to do it. Maybe Augusta were going to give him an invite anyway. Yeah. He's rattled the can so loud that yeah, he's 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 got to step up and prove that he was worthy yeah. of that invite. Because you know what, I don't know necessarily how Augusta National Golf Club operates, but there could be something riding on this yeah. in terms of how they they choose to invite mm. future live players mm-hmm. you know we gave your best player your most on-form player an invite he showed up he missed the cut what she might yeah. do maybe he's just happy to be there <laughs> i cannot believe the next name after roddy bastard but rod wilcock has sent us a message saying if a pl- <laughs> if a player has a choice between winning the masters but never winning another tournament afterwards or never winning the masters who would choose to take the Masters win? Everyone. So, so is he saying you you either have like say an amazing a, a, career an amazing career, but no Masters win, no major win, or you win the Masters and then you're just basically Sean McKill. Yeah, who would take the Masters right now? That is Rory, that would it not a million a million? How many times do we have this discussion? Would you rather have like Colin Montgomery's career? Yeah, yeah. or Monty win none? But wins the Masters, I think. Even Monty's have? pretty much said, "I'd rather my career, thanks." Yeah. yeah. Would you rather have four PGAs or one Masters? Yeah. It's not even up for the debate with me. Yeah. What is it? A Masters. Yeah. Because I get to go to that dinner for the next four. There's years. a Champions Dinner for the the PGA as well. I know, and it's, I mean, it's not, just Justin Thomas looks, making crude jokes. Yeah, yeah. Like, and let's be honest, it looks shit. It does, doesn't it? It looks. Did I, you, I in thought, full swing, season yeah. two, they, they they took people behind that, the scenes and showed them that dinner. It looks rubbish. Their dinner. There was a really weird forced moment where Brooks Kepka sort of went, "Oh, it's really good to see you guys." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like it was like he was told to say it. it exactly. Was really odd, wasn't it? You need to have this speech ready. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bit. It was kind of crap. The only good thing about it is that everyone's dressed differently. I mean, you know, when you show up for dinner and everyone's wearing exactly the same uh-huh. thing as you, like, oh, green jacket again, as it lads. All right. <laughs> Steak is it, Jack? <laughs> Can I change his question to would you rather win the Open or the Masters? Uh, I know for I, me I, what I, I do. Easy to answer. I, no disrespect to uh, Augusta National Golf Club, but the Open's the Open. Of course. We've held one of the Claret jugs. I've looked at all the names. I know I want to see my name on that. Yeah, because that the Americans, be whenever you see the Americans rank the four majors, the Open is generally, apart from the hi- historians of the game, the Tiger Woods of the world, the Open is generally like third after the US Open because that's their national championship. That's their national championship, yeah. yeah I do get that. Unless you're Gary Player and you rate the Masters fourth. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's still a bit miffed about their son. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. But he'll show up. Yep. He'll still go. Absolutely. He'll still get he'll his still three show off. He'll still, still get do his, his stupid joke. This year paid by John. <laughs> still get to do his little high kick after teeing it off in the first yeah. listen we joke about Gary Player the guy's a legend of the game and I do love him he gives us great entertainment but yes, he does. don't tell me the, the, the Masters isn't the fourth that's the PGA Andrew Hunter this is a brilliant question you must ditch one tradition which one of the following is it the par 3 
the honorary starters drive in. He says the drive in by the oldies. The keep your seat patron rule, calling them patrons rather than spectators. The four please announcement on the first tee or the toe curling. His words, Jim Nance chat with the winner in the butler cabin. Well, no, that last one brings too too many good moments. Like the awkward handshake. In fact, the last four of those are all fine. There was a, I I had a brilliant moment last year when I was stood by the 18th green and I saw Robbie Fowler, the Liverpool football legend. And obviously no one apart from about six people around him knew who he was. And he's sort of jostling for position, trying to get his like deck chair in place. And then there's some uh, guy there, like a volunteer or whatever they are, like helping him out. And I was like, you have no idea that, that you are just, you are literally talking and helping out like sporting royalty in the UK. Oh, essentially. no, 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 I'm not having that. Oh, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. In, in, in England, he definitely is. He's Robbie Fowler, mate. Alex, chill out of you. I, I hate many England caps as he got? I hate Liverpool Sport- as much as the next guy, but that guy, royalty. he's a Premier League legend. Uh, you said the word sporting royalty. Yes. Yes. Football, he is football royalty in yeah. Premier League era. No, you need to... Let's see, he doesn't get in an all-time 11 for... You need no, to calm down. No, he doesn't. But so he he's, is, not royal, he's not a sporting but royalty. He is, Do you know what royals why are? Why am I sticking up for Robbie Fowler? <laughs> he's never done anything for me. Let's, as an but he is a legend. Man. No, he's a legend. A there's a reason. Legend. Okay, there's a reason why Liverpool that. fans call him God. So, so what happened? He was anyway, it was, seat in. well, no, you can fuck off now. <laughs> <laughs> what was what were the first three? Sorry, so just the first three. <laughs> tell it, next week will be tell us your Robbie Fowler story again. <laughs> was he just happy to be there too? <laughs> Was that the end of the story? Yeah. Mm. First three, par three competition. The honorary that, starters. Yeah, I was, I wouldn't, keep your seat. The honorary that. starters is 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 kind of crap, but good. But the yeah, par three, it's all right. I do like you it. The par yeah, three is a bit awkward, three, would, where somebody's yeah. trying to drag someone under the trees who's quite sweaty, and they've got their kid there. The kid might, might look quite cute, and they uh, bite yeah, the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> but after a while, the next kid that does it, they don't look cute anymore. Yeah. Then it's a wee bit. But isn't this nice to share it with your family? And you just think, what a sort of shit. You shame. wouldn't notice if the par three went. Yes. Would you? you'd, mm. just, you'd be like, oh, well, okay. Thank cool. God that's over. Can we get some golf started? I feel quite triggered about the toe curling, as Andrew's called it, Jim Nance chat. Now, Jim Nance, if you want to talk about sport and royalty, Jim Nance is sport and royalty. That man well, we is, could talk about many, sport and royalty because we understand the definition. How many, of how many Premier League titles is How many England caps has Jim Nance got? <laughs> how many trophies has Robbie Fowler got? <laughs> Good question. But no, Jim Nance, I, I love the cheesiness of yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, Masters, yes. mm-hmm. the Masters is... Let's be honest, it's the cheesiest event in golf as well. It's well, as one of the best, one of the most important. It's massively cheesy. And I love it all the more because of that. There there are times that you can tolerate the, the schmaltz and the... But Nance knows when oh, to deliver the right tone and, and schmaltz. Yeah. And when Tiger won, he kept it silent when he walked off the green. That's just magnificent. Mm-hmm. So that's insulted me, that. Yeah, sorry, Andrew, not having that. <laughs> Four please announcement like that. Four please, like Dustin that. Johnson now yeah, driving. It's cool. I, I think that's that cool. amazing. Yeah, class. Patrons, it doesn't bother me. Not offensive, me. No. no. No, it's fine. Keep your seat rule. I think that's brilliant. It's beautifully yeah. enforced and everyone mm-hmm. acknowledges yeah. it. Sure, yeah. humanity still alive in the world. Yeah. <laughs> the honorary starters thing. Well, if it's not that, then it's just... It's just Mike Weir hitting the first shot yeah. of the Masters. Yeah, yeah it's a <laughs> sorry, pretty, Mike. It's, there's no reason to get there early. One of yeah, the great yeah. things is that everyone is on the ground at like seven o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. cold, it's dewy, but everyone's there and they spend the rest of the day there rather than just this trickle arriving. And while, so it's part three, unfortunately. Like While people like us will be cynical about it and take the piss out of it, when you're there, and I was there last year, there are hundreds of people there and they all absolutely love it. Like They are in their element in that yeah. moment. Because there's a lot just, of reverence for the moment yeah, as well. Like, exactly. Bryce, you saw Jim Nance they are was it the first year you were there and he was just completely consumed was it not in fact no it was 2017 at the year after Palmer went and it yeah. was he was very reverential in the moment yeah, and he whatnot. was he was uh, I was actually standing right I'm not going to name the journalist but he hushed the journalist standing next to me because mm. he tried to butt in and he kind of went like that as they were talking about Arnold Palmer and it was a, a moment that he wanted yeah. to listen to and he hushed the guy I thought oh yeah, Augusta does that sort of pomp and ceremony particularly well. Yeah, so it's just it's a lovely good attempt. Mm-hmm. A couple more questions. Daniel Storton, he's actually got two beauties. One, should there be an age limit? I presume an upper age limit for using your winner's exemption at the moment. Obviously, you're allowed to play until you decide otherwise. Should there be an upper age limit? No. 
Yes. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. I'm even though you've that. earned your, even though you've earned your right to play, I don't believe I don't believe you should have that for the rest of your days because it, it's a major championship. Correct. It's meant to be it, the the best golfers in the world. And yes, we want to welcome a few. The Open is different because it's a 156 in the field. Yep. The Masters hovers around 80. Uh, so yeah, Masters should uh, cut it 38, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it, should be, yeah, it should just be the 25 players who can win it. Yeah. None of these happy to be there. No, I think, None of these um, old boys. I think probably 60. Mm-hmm. You know. Yep. Alex, you said no. No, I, I I like the again. It's we're talking about Augusta and the ceremonial things that they do and the way they do that. Uh, I, but you, I think that will uh, change as the years go by because players are fitter, healthier. Yeah, and I think as the more that goes on, it, it just doesn't. To me, look uh, too many guys plus fifty eight plus maybe change it fifty eight plus sixty two. That will be. But how like, many? You'll have like twelve Bernard Langers in the field. Yeah, true. That yeah, that actually that's that changes the question somewhat, doesn't it? When you think about what it will be like in the future, because at yeah. the moment it's actually only really a laugh about Freddie Couples, who might not play because he's done his back in, mm-hmm. isn't he? Yeah. Uh, Mike Weir and yeah. VJ Singh. Like, is that it in terms of the yeah. sort of the old boys? So, Phil. sorry, Phil. Yeah, Phil's well, fifty-two, yeah. fifty-three. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that, that but his example. He he. You know what was he? What did he do last year? What third or something Second ridiculous third, last yeah. year? Yeah. Um, there are always exceptions that prove a rule yeah. but to me the field size is so small I, I struggle with it at the open because I just yeah. don't see what competitive value that they're adding there mm. I, I think ultimately it comes down to are you competitive across the board and in this day and age of data and insights and whatnot we could probably no. quickly conclude that these guys aren't competitive no. you might get a fairy tale story once in a blue moon is that a reason to keep it for me no to be totally honest that's why you've got senior majors you know what? Let's flip it. Let's what allow somebody who's... <laughs> yeah, let's allow every year, as long as these guys are going to continue to play in the young majors, the senior golfers can play in young majors, every year, five players who are under the age of 50, say between 40 and 50, should be taken, have a mini order of merit to play in the senior majors. See how they like it then. All right. There's okay. a thought. Next yep. question. Daniel's other question. If you had the Open as the first major of the year instead of the Masters, do you think it would get more or less hype slash anticipation than the Masters? That's a good question. Well, Don't first know, of all, I wouldn't, be, in the cold rain. I wouldn't be playing the Open in February, no, no. or even April. Well, we did last year. <laughs> Just felt like it. Yeah, that was brutal at Hoylake, wasn't it? Yeah. No, I think the Masters, I think it benefits from its slot. Mm-hmm. And it's never really moved, has it? Not in the modern game anyway. So, yeah, tough question. You couldn't play the Open in February or you couldn't play the Open in April in this country. But too freezing. Yeah, I'm not putting words in Daniel's mouth, but I suppose he's saying if the Masters was the last, would it still be as hyped? Would it still be as special? Would it still have this place? And would we still be doing a two-hour podcast about it, for example? Yes. Yeah, the Masters and the Open are the two that stand yeah. out above the rest. And I think even if you asked Americans, the, the the hype, I've been to PJ Championships and I've been to US Opens <laughs> and the hype for those two isn't the same yeah. as it is for the yeah. Open or the, or the yeah. Masters at all. Exactly. Matt McGuire, after last year's live players' performances, how well do you expect them to do this year? I'm going to paraphrase Matt's question somewhat. There's 13 of them playing, 13 of them, 13 live <laughs> players playing. How many do you think will make the cut? Oh. Because it's slightly covered Matt's point. I mean, how well do we expect them to do? We'll expect Brooks to do well. We'll expect Ram to do well. But out of the 13, how many are going to make the cut? Maybe half of them. Yeah, at least half. At least half. Half, half, of, half do, of 13. Do quite well. <laughs> That's six plus somebody else in a wee bit. This <laughs> is six plus six. someone who's Brian Harmon night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I reckon all the live players that are playing there are John Ram because he'll miss the cut but has to stay for the... Oh, yeah, there you go. There's there you go. There's, there your, you half. Go. There's there your half. Go. There's your half. Well done. And the last question from Carol Biddle. Biddle. Have any of you played Augusta? <sighs> she didn't ask that. <sighs> Almost made it. Brilliant. Uh, yes, is the answer to that. And there's a podcast you can listen to from about a year ago that tells you okay. everything you need to know. Any questions? I've got a slice of ginger cake downstairs that I really want to eat. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, I think we have pretty much covered every single point. 
I love doing this particular episode. Uh, it's genuinely one of the highlights of my year. The Masters is one of the highlights, I think, of everybody's year. So thank you to everyone who has listened. Thank you to you if you've been watching along on YouTube as well. A reminder of all the things we're doing next week at the Masters, Alex and I. You'll see it on the Bunkered website, on our social channels, YouTube Live. Keep an eye out for that because that's going to be either brilliant or dreadful depending <laughs> on the signal in downtown Augusta. That's something we haven't actually established yet because we know that downtown Augusta isn't exactly the most affluent. It's not as affluent as Beverly Hills. Oh, yeah. Do no, they have not. 4G? Yeah, they probably so, will. We'll find out. We will find out. And you will find out when you tune in and me and Alex are going... But, <laughs> I, I, because I, someone's I, running away with our phone <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we'll be doing that obviously the daily commute pods as well the next time that you hear from us it'll be from the uh, the grounds of Augusta National itself so all that remains to say is thank you very much for listening for watching Bryce thank you for your time enjoy Pleasure. the tournament Alex likewise although I'll be there with you I'll see you at Heathrow <laughs> yes and that might be the last we ever see of each other okay just to bring we that conversation that. full circle. <laughs> yeah, and look, obviously, thank you to Callaway for your continued support. It is much appreciated indeed. The 2024 88th edition of the Masters is upon us, and I cannot wait. Let's go. Until next time, bye-bye for now. <laughs>